Let's call to order. All right, everybody, we're going to have to do the pledge by ourselves, so please stand up and let's do the pledge. We have a uh, roll call, please. Councilmember Yaffe? Here. Councilmember Chicoche? Here. Councilmember Saber? Here. Councilmember Reed? Here. Councilmember Leonard? Here. Vice Mayor Fuller? Here. And Mayor Bruder? Here. All present? Thank you. So we have a very special presentation today from MPS Superhero Foundation. If you can please come forward and uh, give your, state your name for the record. Actually, and Ma Madam Mayor, if you don't mind. Yes. Um, you, can, you guys come up. Abram and Monica, uh, they were given my contact information by my counterpart in, in Bell Harbor. Um, Abram and Monica have been going from city to city you know, making a presentation about a very special cause that's near and dear to their heart. And uh, so when they asked, I talked to Marlene, is there any way to put them in? And so they, uh, and Marlene just put them in the agenda for, and I told them that they have, you know, five, ten minutes to, to, to say their spe speech. All right? Uh, first of all, thank you, JC, and uh, thank you, City um, Bay Harbor. Uh, really you, appreciate uh, you guys and allowing us to uh, present you, today. Can you state your name for the record? Yes, my name is Avram Joseph, Vice President and Co-Founder of MPS Superhero Foundation. And I am Monica Anaya, President and Co-Founder of MPS Superhero Foundation. Thank you. Um, first of all, uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak and uh, allow us to raise awareness here with you guys today. Um, MPS Superhero Foundation was founded two weeks after our son, Kalau, who is now five and a half, was diagnosed with a rare terminal disease called mucopolysaccharidosis type two, MPS two for short, and is also known as Hunter syndrome. Um, this disease is caused by a missing or insufficient enzyme called adernate 2 sulfatase which is supposed to break down cellular waste. Due to the fact that he doesn't produce enough of that enzyme, he cannot break down the cellular waste and it accumulates in every single cell in his body. Um, the accumulation causes bone deformity, organs to swell up and stop functioning, and cognitive regression. Most children by the age of 10 lose the ability to walk, talk, and eat and around five they begin to regress cognitively, which uh, that's where our son is right now. Fortunately, he has not shown any signs of regression, um, but you know that can happen at any point uh, from this age forward. Um, we started the foundation uh, two weeks after he was diagnosed when we found out that the doctor who was able to diagnose him after seeing many doctors only knew about the disease because of another parent. Um, and there is not a lot of awareness. There's actually only 500 children in the U.S. with this disease and 2,000 worldwide. Um, the purpose of our foundation and our mission is to raise awareness about MPS for hopefully, uh, you know, earlier diagnosis in children. He does receive a weekly enzyme replacement therapy, which helps slow down the progression, but it does not cross a blood-brain barrier. And that's why these children will still lose their lives, usually by 14. Um, there is a cure that has been found in Ohio at Nationwide Children's Hospital, and we are working with other foundations around the U.S. to raise $2.5 million to fund this clinical trial that has already received FDA approval to start. The only thing standing in the way from saving these children's lives is money. Um, at this point, we're about $600,000 away from reaching our goal of $2.5 million to start the clinical trials, hopefully before the end of the year. Because like I said, uh, time is of the essence because these children do lose abilities and once they begin to lose those abilities, it's something that they will not get back. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Avram and let him speak a little more. Um, we've come across many different municipalities. Uh, we started off at Miami Lakes, formed a team with Miami Lakes. Um, they've actually put us down with so many different municipalities across uh, uh, South Florida, uh, Doral, Sweetwater. We've also uh, done City of Miami was our most recent one. Um, we 
we are definitely pushing to make money for this cure. Um, we didn't expect things to happen, and at City of Miami, they pledged 10 grand. At uh, Sweetwater, Commissioner Borrero pledged $12,000 to our to what we're trying to get done. Um, you know, we have Sweetwater Police Department, they're doing fundraisers for themselves. Miami Lakes is doing a Jingle Bell Jog 5K in December. Um, proceeds will be going to the MPS Superhero Foundation. We have our own kickball tournament that we're going to be doing as well, uh, second annual. This is going to be on October 20th. Uh, we're asking municipalities to come form a team and, and you know, band together to help save these children's lives. Uh, we come to you today one, to help spread awareness, and, and two, to see whoever's watching and, and all of you, and hopefully you guys can spread the word as well. We need to spread awareness. There's not much awareness about this disease, and we're on a time frame that we have to meet before we lose our son's life. Oh. We have uh, partnered up with... Uh, <laughs> Um, we have partnered up with local businesses in uh, the surrounding cities. We have um, one of the commissioners from Doral actually is hosting a fundraiser at one of uh, a business that she owns called Brain Freeze in Doral. And uh, Headquarter has been an amazing support. They have been one of our biggest sponsors since we started. You know, so we just want to reach out to local businesses, anybody and everybody who can possibly help us save not only our son, but all of the children affected by this disease. I know that we have the, uh, we also have a, like a 5K run, which we raise money and we, I don't know if we have determined who the, the proceeds of the run will go to, but I mean, I would, you know, I would proffer to um, direct the proceeds to the NPS Foundation. That's fine. Um, That's fine. Isaac, usually we, we send it to um, Pal. But this year, you know, we certainly have money. We get money from the 5K that we certainly could do do that. Right. Um, first of all, thank you so much for coming and opening our eyes to this. And really, kudos to you for turning your grief into action and helping other children as well. I mean, it's really wonderful what you're doing. And you have an amazing group of supporters who are willing to come out. Your core group, I can tell right there. Um, I think we, we may need a little time to kind of brainstorm and see what it is we can do for you rather than off the cuff just thinking of some things, you know, and uh, what I was thinking, and let's see if I have any support, um, would it help maybe if we uh, gave a little space in our newsletter? You know, like Absolutely. sometimes we, we, we allow um, businesses to buy ads, but maybe, you know, we could waive that fee and, you know, put some stories, and your logo is a really good eye catcher, and um, you know, maybe that could help. I, I think there might be a lot of things we can do. We just might not be thinking about it right now. But, uh, you know, I'm aware of some, some other rare diseases also, you know, that started off like this. And now, you know, hopefully the, uh, those with the disease are diminishing as the awareness is increasing. But, uh, you know, we have all your information here, I think, uh, your websites and everything. So I, I definitely would like you to be on our radar for what we could do. and. Keep in touch with us. Let us know if you do have fundraisers. And uh, I, I don't know if you work with a fundraising professional at all or, you know, if you need someone to brainstorm ideas with. Uh, do you have someone you work with, like, to hook you up with the foundations and we, everything? We're like always that? open to meeting new people. Okay. Um, so so that would be great. I think, Bridget, I think in the next newsletter, September's newsletter, I think that we should put an article, um, make sure that you get in contact with Bridget so that we can put an article in our newsletter so that, and also where, if anybody wants to contribute, where they can send those checks to. Mm -hmm. And then... If I may, I was going to ask if there's any type of ongoing, like, GoFundMe type or internet so campaign where those who, you know, are watching or us, you know, could go on and make a, a donation apart from the town. Absolutely, and, and thank you for reminding us. We get so caught up in the feelings that we're going through, we, we seem to forget those things, and it's the most important part. Please, you can visit our website at uh, www.mpssuperhero.org. Uh, M is in Mary, P is in Paul, S is in Sam. Um, we also have our Facebook, uh, MPS Superhero. 
um, social media, all is MPS Superhero. Uh, we've actually done PayPal. You can do PayPal through it. You, we do uh, online donations, anything of that sort. We do it right on our website. It's secured. That way you, you can feel good. Um, this is one of the boys, uh, Michael and Danielle. They're part of the foundation as well. Welcome. Um, Welcome. Mm -hmm. Danielle, I want to say hi. Um, <laughs> hi, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, we walked in a, a little bit late. Traffic is crazy around here. <laughs> <laughs> so our, our son, I guess, is, is still stuck in traffic. Um, <laughs> this is Michael. There's, there's four boys in South Florida that are diagnosed with this disease. So I think we're also having a car show. I thought maybe they could have a booth there. Um, we're having a car show. Uh, maybe you could have a booth there that they can. I mean, I think, let me ask one more thing. Did you say something about that one of the other cities is is creating a, a kickball tournament for cities to? So this is actually our sponsor. Oh, we, so this is it's called Kicking for a Cure kickball tournament. This is our second annual. Uh, we're doing it in Miami Lakes this year. Um, and we have uh, Miami Lakes is, is doing a team. Um, Sweetwater is doing a team. City of Doral will be doing a team. Um, we're, we're trying to get local businesses to be a part of it as well. Um, if you guys are interested in, in yeah, I mean, I, banning I, with. Do you know the date? When is yes, it's October 20th at Miami Lakes Optimus Park. It's a Saturday. And you can actually register on our site, or you can contact me directly, and I can go ahead and register for you guys. Uh, whatever is more convenient for you, we want to make sure you're, you're not spending too much time. I think we can sponsor, potentially look into sponsoring a team yeah. and doing something along those lines. And I wanted to say one thing. Um, Michael is the oldest of the four boys How with Hunter realize? Syndrome. Michael is the oldest of the four boys with Hunter Syndrome in South Florida, and hopefully Chloe will get to be here. And you'll see, you know, that time is of the essence. It's very important. This disease robs from these boys quickly. So hopefully you all will get to meet Kalel and, and just see that's, that's what we're fighting for and preserving that. Right. So if you want, you can get together with Bridget also. Like I said, we're having a car show where there will be lots of people. You can set up a booth and give information and maybe you can get some donations there too and we'll help you in anything that we possibly can. Absolutely. Yeah. I want to thank you so much. Um, I read somewhere hope is the best stimulant of life um, and, and you guys are giving us that today. We really appreciate that. Um, there is a slogan that we have, we created ourselves. Uh, maybe. You don't need superpowers to be a superhero and today just by allowing us to be here you guys are all superheroes to us. Thank you. the last minute. You guys want to see Kalel? Absolutely. Oh, this is Kalel's younger brother, Logan. Logan, you got something to say? Help me share my birds in the night. Kalel, you want to say hi? Hi. 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 How are you? <laughs> <laughs> this is Kalel. Um, these boys are how it all started. They are true superheroes, and, and by you teaming up with us, you guys are superheroes as well. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, 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 would you like to take a picture for the newsletter? Sure. Yeah, that'd be great. I think we're all, we're all part of it together. What if, um, would you all mind if we brought everyone with purple shirts along with you guys up here? Please do.
Yeah. You got to get in. You got to get in. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to bring up Sean Hemingway, that's how. Yeah. Okay. Not after hour. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, request for withdrawals, deferments. Okay. Deferments of future agenda items. Anybody? Um, I would like to ask that we defer an item tonight on second reading. Okay. Uh, which one? The one on utility billing. You know, I had originally asked to put this on, and uh, I was hoping to get a little more information of what other towns our size do. So I think that got lost in translation. So I don't think it's so urgent that if we could uh, postpone that until we could get a little bit more information. What information? Well, I, what information are you looking for, Kelly? Well, uh, basically the procedures that other towns and cities are using. Eleven. But would you have to do first reading over again if you don't? It's, it's second, second, second reading. Start. You'd have to start all over. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only problem with your second. Reading. I mean, I mean, I, I, I'm definitely not going to vote for it because it's it's deficient in a couple of things that I think are very important, and I I did mention uh, the last time we spoke about it that that was one of the reasons and that I would like to see what other towns are doing. I, so. I don't have a problem with, with delaying it. You know, I'm not, I, right now I'm not in support of it either. So. Anybody else? Sorry, I Jack. think that's fine if you want to defer. Yeah. Defer, that's defer. fine. Yeah. Defer. For more information. Thank you. Um, I just want to put out there, I did talk to Ron, the mental health counselor item is coming up on a future agenda, just so everybody's aware, because I know we had talked about yeah. that during the budget. Anything else? I was gonna, I'm just gonna say, I guess now on the um, on the consent agenda, I want to pull under minutes E through I, only because it's my own. I did a, I sat at a clip and read, you know, from September through November, but I never got around to the rest, so I, I can't vote on the other ones okay. that I haven't read. Okay. So you want to pull it and then we'll bring it back after right. you. Okay. And I want to pull number five out of the consent. Number uh, one? Which number? Five? I can hear five. you. Oh, five. Yes. And I'll be okay. pulling number six also. And you're pulling number yeah. six? Any, Isaac, anything? <laughs> That's, is there anything left? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm just asking. Okay. And I would I like to, for I further, I would like to, for further agenda items to talk about town hall and what we are going to do to refurbish this, uh, Facility, facility, facility that is um, <laughs> deteriorating in front of us. Thank We're pulling six, or do we want to pull seven too? Because they're related. Um, I'll pull seven for discussion okay. if you want. Let's so. pull seven. Yeah. As I worked on both, so. Okay. Let's defer. Okay. So, let's see. Marlene, did you get all that? <laughs> <laughs> kind of, yeah. Okay, so we are. 
pulling E through I, number three. We're pulling number five, six, and seven for discussion. We are deferring number 11 to for further seven. information. And three, we're, pull, we're deferring yeah, three. Yeah, she, she said it. I, I missed that. Right. She's deferring three. Okay. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You, pull, you want to pull the entire three or just three? I think Bob wants to pull the four. Just, just the one. E, just oh, E through okay. I. Oh, I will okay. defer those to right. the next right. meeting. Got it. To the next meeting. Correct. Yeah. Okay. 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 <laughs> now that that's taken care of, town just manager a, report. Just to follow up on um, Elizabeth's statement that the mental health care provider that's trying to add an extra day, Surfside and Bell Harbor already, um, in fair, you know, they're on board with that, and we're meeting together on the 29th to discuss adding the extra day. I know when we spoke to. Um, we met with the school officials, Scott Stapperstein, just to discuss security and the up upcoming school year. It came up, and they were very—they would love to have the extra, the extra day at it. So, um, with that said, I'd like to ask Sean to just take a slow walk up here. You know, <laughs> we have a very—we uh, have a very good camera system in the town with the uh, the plate readers. Um, we do have a couple of fixed cameras throughout the town that records. Um, images primarily around the bridge and um, we got hit a little while ago on the West Island with somebody that came in and, and you know occasionally they get into the open doors on the cars and hit us pretty hard. Um, the police department was able to put together a very quick uh, uh, plan of action and uh, I don't want to steal Sean's thunder but a, an arrest was made in that case and I'll let him explain how it happened. Well, if you could. Thank you, uh, Mr. Manager. So we had uh, a series of two different nights of break-ins on the West Island. And, um, you know, we went through all of our, our surveillance and we're having a real tough time. So we started working with the various an, uh, analysts around the area. And we were able to identify a suspect out of North Miami um, who was arrested on an arson charge. Uh, so after our surveillance, after uh, about a week of investigations, we charged all counts from the West Island, 15 counts. Um, we haven't been able to recover any of the property. Um, we're going back through the pawn shops now, but um, the person is in jail for our charges and a, uh, you know, various other charges in, in other jurisdictions. So that case is closed. I can't comment on the other burglary case because it's an active investigation with very good, strong leads. So I'll report on that after we make that arrest. Okay. Um, but one, of the, one of the good things was um, on the night of in question, on the bridge, there was a video of a person coming over the bridge on a bicycle. And when you were able to match up the suspect with the video, it really kind of clued in. Our video wasn't like crystal clear, but it definitely put us right on the right track. So it, that was great by the detectives. And, and thank you. And Sean, a personal thank you for me as well, considering my wife's car was one of the ones broken into as well. So thank you. Like we say, you can get on the island, but you can't get off. So I'm glad we were able to uh, make the arrest. Sean, Sean, hold on one sec. Um, I just said that we met with the school officials just to let you know that uh, the police are ready for opening day. The, uh, our public works department over the years has always assisted the school with little maintenance issues, uh, primarily landscaping and helping them get ready for the new year just to make sure everything looks good. So they've been, they've been fully on board. And um, Sean, if you want to talk a little bit about the security and you know what, what, we, what to expect, but a lot, a lot of work has been done laying the foundation for a, a good security and opening day. We're, we're, but limited. Are we, we don't share more than is necessary. Oh, no. This is just regular. <laughs> So, um, you know, first and foremost, I want to thank the council again. You know, I always try to highlight the, the positive efforts of, of you guys because we don't always hear the great things you do. But this wasn't the police department. This wasn't one person. This was uh, a collaborative effort of every council member up here, the manager, the assistant manager, um, just coming together, my team, to really fight hard to get this officer in place by the fall. Um, I'm happy to report that uh, we will have a school resource officer in place by opening day, which um, not every jurisdiction can say that's occurring. Um, so but kudos to you guys. Kudos to, uh, to the mayor and, and, and to Jordan. I know he's done a lot with the League of Cities, uh, championing this cause with the MOUs and the funding. Um, and that's, that's the right thing to do. 
Um, this was an unfunded mandate that we were politically challenged to fill. Um, and, and in the 11th hour, Jordan was able to go out and get funding for it. So um, that definitely sealed the deal for us. Um, and also Ron, you know, I, I got to give him thanks, even though he's, he won't want it, um, you know, working with the other town managers to cover the balance of the... Uh, Can you please the, explain to them what that means, that we are not funding the complete costs? I think there's some... So, 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 okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's not essentially yet. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> There's five misconception out there. Yeah, it looks like we will get funding, and there's strong program in place, and we will only be funding a, a small portion of it, um, but the specifics will come. As far as the um, working with the school board, it's been great. It's um, you know it's probably the best year I've seen in the last five years. I've tried for many years to get basic code red drills established um, and work together with our police and um, and the school and met with resistance, and it just seems like the uh, level of cooperation has gotten much better. Uh, in fact, tomorrow we're going to do a act, an active shooter drill with uh, Miami-Dade uh, school police, uh, the local agencies, Bow Harbor, uh, Bay, Bay Harbor, Surfside, North Miami, um, and we're going to go over all the the possible scenarios for that school and, and a tabletop exercise for our, our supervisors. That's about as far as I'll get into that. Um, but you know, again, thank you for your for all the equipment and for the the funding. A lot of this training for tomorrow is possible because of the last two budgets um, training uh, funding budgets. You know, I don't know if you realize, but you guys have, have given us a, a substantial amount of money, and here's your return on the investment. You know, we now have trained the trainers in place to do this training locally. We don't have to rely on other people. So thank you. Um, next, with the vulnerability assessment, we, we've, we've looked at some of the areas of hardening. Um, I know, Elizabeth, you, you had mentioned some things, so we have some ideas. Um, based on some funding with the cameras. Um, so we'll be working on that to, to make sure the school and the uh, town facility, the, um, the after school program, um, both um, are part of that hardening. And the so, community center too. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm referring to, so. So that's uh, pretty much it. Thank you, Sean. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, Chief. Yeah. Yeah. Chief. Appreciate you. I'd like to ask Mellon to come up. Uh, Charles Slacks to give us an uh, update before we finish off with vacation rentals. Thanks, Ron. Hi, I'm Charles Sachs. I'm a senior wealth manager for Bank of New York Mellon at the Miami office. I think you all received the packet of information for the returns for 2018 second quarter for Town of Bay Harbor. The returns for the town accounts were about 16% for the quarter. Uh, as of 630 2018 the combined market value six million seven hundred excuse me six million two hundred seventy two thousand and seventy seven dollars estimated annual income of one hundred and forty one thousand and ninety five dollars and so the re returns are still somewhat negative for the year we we've seen periods of time where we've had negative quarters or even negative through half of the year our expectations for markets going forward, we're starting to see uh, a little bit of inflation, which is good. You see unemployment is relatively low. We still expect the Federal Reserve to increase the Fed funds rate, perhaps up to two times uh, next year. Uh, we're constantly in touch with our economic and our bond team. Uh, as we know, a lot of companies have done very well with the tax cuts and repatriation of uh, about $800 billion that came back to the United States that was invested, was paid out, was share buyback. So we're seeing a very strong economy right now. We're still watching uh, very carefully for, or excuse me, forecasting for 2019, but right now we see a very strong and robust economy. Uh, any questions? Two, actually, if you don't yes. mind. One, um, just, well, it's not so much a question. I, I'm going to just ask you to to still keep in mind what I usually ask you every time is that if at any point that you feel that either some change needs to be made in the investment or the investment guidelines that we offer, because obviously we're very conservative in what we're allow, allowing to happen, if you, there's any point that you want to change it or recommend to please come forward and say it. Because I know that obviously market conditions have shifted considerably over the last year or two. So it might be something to Certainly will. The, and, and it's a very good point. The, the accounts are actively managed on an ongoing basis. As you can imagine, in part of it, and I'll be working with Melissa to update the investment policy statement from the, from the, uh, from the, from the city. But the, the guidelines are really the mandates that come down through Florida statute, and they're very, very tight as far as what can be done. And there's really only two things that can be done. You can extend maturities 
and or you can take on additional credit risk, which both of which are very tightly uh, controlled by Florida statute. Right. That being said, and when I look at the portfolios, although they're relatively mild returns uh, that, that we've done in the last few years, it's been a, a nice uh, return that we've seen about a 4% return since inception. I'm not so sure we're going to get back in that time frame, but one also has to realize if we are getting to the point where we're getting the bonds at 3 or 4%, that means inflation has gone up, which also means while the accounts go up in, in value, the purchasing power diminishes with that part. So we'll, we'll take that to heart with something we're always looking at, the guidelines through the state of Florida such that these funds be available at the worst possible time with market conditions predicates uh, how we do this. Yeah, just start doing work when usually you have a nice bound thing all of a sudden one of our economics. It, it, <laughs> what we've done what we've done with that is in, kidding, a, you know, a lot of that was the, the statements and we can certainly go back to where you have the copies of the statements I know some members wanted that perhaps maybe electronically but if you prefer the the other part that has all the detail in the holdings we can certainly do that Not for right now this is fine Thanks. Thanks. yeah um, question did you change just by the the actual comparison um, did you change the index comparison or is that the same very good question and so that's on your page I noticed that this quarter we beat the index and we almost never beat the index actually I don't remember it, it, it didn't it didn't change but Barclays uh, changed the name of that's the, what it is of the okay. index and we have a footnote that's on the bottom of it okay. that's hard to see page so that's what okay so it's the same three, index. same index but that that um, that's a little too that. little for <laughs> the print yeah, no, no sorry. About that. We'll, we'll try but, to make that a little. No, better. but but it but you did change just the Come name. Come on, Jordan. You know, if you can't beat the index, you change the index. <laughs> <laughs> the index. Right. And so the old, the old joke is, an investment managers never met an index they couldn't beat if you switched it around. Our our point of it is, while it is there, and it's and I've I've thought about this, and perhaps us maybe not having it based. Based on how we do things and the restrictions through the the Florida statute, it's. It doesn't match up that well. Most times we'll lag that index. Sometimes we'll beat that index. No, I mean I understand how and, and why it does because of how we we sell the, the bonds, and I understand that. But I was just wondering because I noticed that the name was different, and I noticed that we actually beat the index. And right. I can't but, remember another time comparison where we actually did. We'll see so. if we can do it again next time. <laughs> it, it would be nice. All right. Uh, thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, John. Thank, thank you, you so much for your time. Sure. Okay. Last thing is vacation rentals. I thought I'd give you just a quick update and, and just maybe ask for some direction here. Back in February last year, we passed this, and I know vacation rentals has been a big issue, not only for us, but everybody across the state. Um, we have guidelines that have been generally working, and um, we have about, well, only about 30. Yeah. 30, 30 people have enrolled in the system to register their units for vacation rentals. Um, most of them are, comp you know, comply, go with the program. Some of them a little, little more reluctantly when we find them, but they all, they all do come around. Um, one of the things that was asked of us recently was the amount of people that are allowed to stay or use use a vacation rental. And in there, there's a pretty simple. Um, way of method of uh, doing that it's two people per bedroom two people for the living room two people for a den can't use a porch can't use the kitchen can't use closets and bathrooms <coughs> and that, well, that kind of gives you how many people can stay in a in a unit so um, if I think the question was if I have a larger unit can I have more people in it so and you there's like bunk pens I don't know no it's just if you know if I have a, a really big unit I might have, I may, on paper, I might be able to put in 12 people, but I, maybe I could put in a few more, you know. Very large bedrooms and things like that. They're large bedrooms, bedroom, yeah, something like that. Yeah, so we, we drew, the, the idea was to make sure we don't, I guess the, the, the concept was don't have party places. And right. so my, my question was, is, are we happy with it or, you know, would anybody like to see it changed? Uh, I don't want to increase the capacity nor, of any right. unit. No, nor do I. I mean, it affects not just the unit, but the, the building. All the neighbors. All the neighbors. It right, the neighbors. Of it. No. Yeah. Okay. I, I want to know about a recent round of complaints, particularly um, on next door. There were some complaints about multiple next rentals. Door, what? what do you mean? Uh, you know, on the, on the blog, nextdoor.com, there was some oh, banter 
I think uh, you know it's monitored by some town staff. But yeah. uh, I, I think you looked into some of them, right? I mean, I think there's one of the newer buildings has ten. Is that correct? Uh, ten. Uh, yeah, it was uh, um, the Ivory Building. Um, has ten registered vacation rentals. Um, might have thirteen okay. right now. Um, and that pretty much has been worked out. Um, What's the address of that problem? Um, 92nd. 90 yeah. East Bay Harbor. 91. Yeah, it's right by the right. park. Right. 9261. Yes. 9261. They can't sell the units. The ceilings are too low. Yeah. That's the problem. Seriously? Yeah. And the that's exactly right by the front door. The design of the building itself is terrible. The, the, the ceilings are too low. Nobody wants to buy the units, so they're putting the money into uh, rentals. So uh, some a lot of the complaints were about a particular unit. Um, those 13s that we have are managed by a company, and they all have... they. they they have their license. That one um, one unit was a separate owner that was doing it on his own. He has applied, and he's going through the process. Um, but um, some of the complaints were a bit exaggerated on on the next door site, uh, and we did look into it. So, but everyone got their license now. Can we clarify something, too? Because I get a lot of residents that come and ask me, why can't we outlaw vacation rentals? Craig, can you just explain why the municipality were precluded from outlawing vacation yeah. rentals? No. Because I get a lot of questions yeah. about that. It, it, it's all preempted by Florida statutes, mm -hmm. and uh, they've taken away the power, except in limited instances, um, of the municipality. So we have to follow state guidelines. And essentially, that, we didn't, answer. our law came before, what we did here, sorry, our ordinance was before that, so it was grandfathered in, but only for the West Island, correct? Yeah. The East Island did not have one, and therefore That's we can't true. enforce we, one now. We can, Im we can implement the state rules with regulations, but the state law controls. Perfect. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify that because I get a lot of but questions. But there is condo uh, rules and right, right, the condo rules are self-regulated. We do like what right. we've done, but I, yeah. I've had like well, at the park do, parents right. ask me right, why don't you just outlaw it, and we can't. We can't. We can't. Right. The condo house has the ability. Have the ability. Right. right. But um, in circumstances like the ivory and the bay breeze, we don't right. have the capability the to stop no, we them no, from turning. We have no capability. Let me, right. Just let me clarify. As but I want for the people who are at home to hear right. from the horse's mouth, you know, right. what the reality yeah, is. Yeah, absolutely. And let me just let me just clarify one thing on that. Just continuing your point, because it's an excellent point for anybody watching at home and anyone here. You know, when we've talked, a lot of us have come up here before and spoken about home rule, and this is one of those instances where a lack of home rule is coming back to be detrimental to us. We've always liked to be able to, to actually regulate things ourselves within our city because we know best for the city, not Tallahassee. And unfortunately, in this instance, Tallahassee has decided to eliminate the home rule pr provision for this particular item, and we've lost the power to regulate all of these vacation rentals within the East Island, and to some extent, even in the West as well. Can I just make another comment about that following up on what Trust said? When we go, when some of us go to Tallahassee every year during the session, we talk to our legislators about the um, attempts of, of a good many in the legislature to strip the home rule provisions and not just from vacation rentals but you know from when we have our elections and so many other issues and uh, as primaries and election day are coming up this year you know learn about the candidates who are running for state rep state senate and so forth um, well we don't have an election for state rep but for state senate but look at some of the other you know municipalities and in, in, in districts as well and what the you know statewide candidates are talking about in terms of home rule because it's really important that we do everything that we can to protect home rule so that we can rule ourselves and not be ruled from Tallahassee. Yeah, and and to add on that, it's it's not just that this is as bad as it can get. Um, last session there was a bill to potentially strike uh, and preempt all of the ordinances that, that exist. So in other words, even what we're allowed to do, they would make illegal which is hard to even fathom. Um, but it was something actually openly discussed in committee, and it was actually a possibility that that would have passed. Luckily, it was something that was defeated, but of course, it's going to come back again, you know, next session. I'm sure it's going to come back. So, you know, what, what Council Member Yaffe said is, is ever more so important now because it's not just a one-time thing. Every year, we have to fight for home rule. Uh, can I just clarify that we didn't lose our ability to regulate 
rentals, we lost our ability to, to just prohibit it because it is tightly regulated and we do enforce and we do yeah, but we've some done of the additional but can. some of the we additional regulations we'd love to put well, in we can't. but but we are limited there are guidelines right. how we can regulate well, for example right. we can't say where or we can't say for the duration right right mm -hmm. okay. so we Correct. we're doing the best we can under the yep. current state exactly. law we can and i believe this is usually a priority selected by you know some of us who serve on committees for the league of cities to lobby for our lobbyist is working on it we work on it you know directly so yep. something we're all trying to change can I ask a question in reference to um, just the manager's item? You know, after reading this, I'm not sure I missed it, but are, what are, do, have we have created sanctions uh, for violation of the, uh, of the vacation rental yes. rules? Yes, yes. It's in the ordinance. Strictly, is it, what, strictly where, yes. where, is, where is it exactly? Yes. yes. It's uh, any, any code Because I know that, like, the city, just sorry to interrupt, here. I know the city of Miami Beach, has an incredibly severe penalty. If you're Just caught with an illegal vacation rental, they penalize you $20,000. Yeah. yeah, we can't. What, the ability <laughs> to <laughs> impose <laughs> the <laughs> amount of fine depends on the, on the number of people in the city. Correct. So we're small oh, town. Really? Yes. Just, uh, they have more than 50,000 people. They can do fines a lot higher than we can. Yep. Plus with code one. enforcement. Plus one. One. Sorry, what are our fines then? Um, I think it's 250, 500, and, and then it increases. It continues well, to increase. Right, but plus for repeated violations, you might also lose yeah, the right to. Yeah, it doubles, and then it doubles the right to. Right. Yeah. right, but there's also another, there's another problem. This is hitting Miami Beach a, a lot, and you know it's something we have to watch for. Unfortunately, there are some other victims in this. Occasionally, what's happened? Right. Actually, I shouldn't say occasionally. It's happened quite a bit in Miami Beach. You have people that are renting out the apartments, or, or they're kind of for the year. In other words, normally perfectly legal, no problem whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And then that person is then going and subletting it out as a vacation Ooh. rental. Right. Then the, right. the, the, the liens come in and, the same, and the people don't care because the liens are going back to the owner mm -hmm. rather than the person who's actually the renter. Yeah. And so you get, some of these people are unfortunate victims. They come back and find 10, 20, 30, 40, $50,000 liens on their property for doing absolutely oh nothing God. wrong. Yeah. So it's a it's an issue. Well, the only thing they're doing wrong is leasing it to someone that they, well, they, don't they know. can't they're trust, you know? But you don't always, you know, you never know. It's yeah. Okay, let's move it on. Okay, so, council report. Okay. Elizabeth? Yes, um, I just want to first say, you know, thank you everyone, Chief and, and Ron, for working on the items that we talked about, particularly during the budget hearing. I know we're about to speak about the police officer and the mental health counselors coming up and also the security and safety. We really appreciate it. I have to tell you, a lot of residents have been calling me over the summer asking me about, you know, the school and what things are, are going on, and so we really appreciate it. Um, the skate park is open. I know we've had a lot of movement on that. Um, so for those residents that are listening, that skate park is open. It is free to Bay Harbor residents. Um, it's a really nice skate park. I'm taking my kids this weekend. Uh, school is back soon, so please, if you're driving around, uh, thank you, Mayor, for putting something in the newsletter about that, reminding everyone, you know, please be more aware. You'll have more children on the street. We would love it if all of them, you know, obeyed traffic signals, but we know that sometimes it's a struggle for them to do so. So please, you know, just be aware. Um, and if you see something, say something. Also, I want to bring up the recreation registration for after school um, please there's lots of programs that are available I know that you know Kathleen and that our staff has been working on bringing some new programs this year uh, and so please you know if you can go online or you can call City Hall or you can go down to the community center and see what is available uh, for your child or for yourself uh, to engage in for the school year nice. it is open thank you uh, last week I attended that opening of the skate park and uh, it's state of the art. It might be, you know, very good, actually better than the Miami Beach one for the smaller kids. The surface is very soft if there is a fall, but it was very impressive and uh, glad to see. This weekend I think most of us will be attending the Florida League of Cities annual conference, which is local in Hollywood this year. And that's a place where we receive a lot of education, we network, we get these legislative updates, and we start, you know, making a plan and bringing back good information for the city for things like the vacation rentals and other issues we need to work on. So I look forward to that. Yes, um, it, we, I guess we didn't have a meeting last month except for the special meeting or whatever. But since our last meeting um, on July 17th, I attended 
the audit committee of the Miami-Dade County School Board, which I'm a member of. Uh, it was an interesting meeting. Uh, not only did we discuss the, uh, and review the audit plan for uh, the fiscal year end 2000, um, 6.30, uh, 2018, but one of the things that was mentioned by uh, staff and the superintendent was the intention of the Miami-Dade County School Board um, to actually put a referendum on the November ballot um, for, uh, to raise additional funds for the teachers, um, which, which is interesting because they went on the ballot about three years ago or four years ago to raise money for improvements to, um, to school buildings and to equip schools that are older or, or poorly equipped. Um, so, you know, keep an eye out for any advertisements and things like that for that school board referendum. On July 30th, um, I attended the, uh, an ad a mandatory advisory um, board sexual harassment training session, which was about two hours at the Miami-Dade County uh, City, their council chambers, and it was interesting to say the least. Um, much of it was, uh, um, you know, much of it was kind of common sense, but there were some, you know, interesting points that were raised. I'm pretty sure they could have probably done the two-hour session in 45 minutes, but, um, uh, you know, there were some interesting points raised. I learned a little bit as well. And, um, you know, it, it's, that's the new state of affairs, I guess, in government. Um, League, um, the League of Cities meeting last week uh, was very, very interesting because I would say three quarters of the meeting was devoted to the, uh, the mutual, uh, the understanding, what is it called, the MO? The MOU, MO yeah. the, uh, the, memo, uh, the memo of understanding. And uh, there were several guest speakers on it, people from the school board, people from the Miami-Dade County uh, Police Department. And it was very interesting. We got to hear the comments and, and, and suggestions um, and some criticism. Uh, you know, of the MOU by the various municipalities. And it was interesting to see um, the attitude that each municipality had, because this um, memorandum of, of understanding that we're going to discuss later in the uh, agenda is going to um, affect or could potentially affect uh, all the municipalities that have uh, elementary schools in them. So, you know, in a, in a city like Hialeah that might have 50 elementary schools, it affects them a lot differently than it would um, our city that has one uh, our town that has one elementary school. So, um, and the last was I too went to the skate park. It was great. Um, it was a very, very nice dedication. You know, we had a pretty good attendance from this council, good representation. I know that uh, I want to give kudos to Jordan because he really, you know, spearheaded it for our town. And um, and I guess Sally gave you the props. And thank you. And uh, and and the facility was uh, it was very very nice and. Um, and I think our citizens are, are in for a treat if they patronize the skate park. That's my report. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, just a, a few items. Um, the skate park, uh, I have to admit, uh, it came out really great. My kids have been harping on, on going back, actually, so I, I have to make a little field trip there before school starts. Um, we received this uh, skate park board, um, each of the mayors, um, at the time I was the mayor when, when I presented this, uh, received a skateboard. And so I am obviously want to dedicate this to the town because um, this is really not just something that I did. This is something we all collectively did. Um, our contribution is one of many that made this happen. And to be honest, I'm really proud of us because for so many years we've heard about how we don't work together, we don't work together. Um, Bay Harbor, Bow Harbor, Surfside, Miami Beach, Santa Isles Beach, and the county all worked together and actually did something, and it actually is open, which is almost unheard of in Day County. So I'm, I'm very proud of my colleagues and all of our colleagues and the other cities in the county. Um, this is something that for generations we're going to look at the skate park and say this is something that um, 
is is great for everyone and and like uh, council member Tricoshi said it's it's free for everybody actually it's free for everyone uh, i know that we're going to work on staff is going to work on uh, a shuttle system so we can actually get the shuttle bus there so um so the kids can get there uh safely um so this is the skateboard that was dedicated so, no 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 listen they took a lot he's going to do a jump right now no, no, no. <laughs> Not That's doing that either. Right <laughs> no. um, you know, I also will be attending the league uh, conference of which uh, Councilmember Salver is on the executive board uh, as the soon-to-be incoming president in two years. Um, the last week meeting I also attended, um, which I'll, I'll mention briefly when we talk about the SROs. Um, that's that's a really important subject, and that's something for the last month I, I would say is probably take up most of my time. Other than that, I'm looking forward to school starting, and I hope everyone remembers to slow down and, if possible, try to walk to school. So, thank you. Yes. Good evening. Thank you. Um, I, too, attended the skate park dedication. It was a great event. I thank uh, Jordan and all of our neighboring mayors and officials who collaborated on this event as well as our Commissioner Sally Heyman because I think it's a, it's a great opportunity for all of our communities. Um, you know, for the parents out there, you know, if you let your kids go over there, make sure they have, uh, you know, helmets and uh, wrist guards and knee guards and so forth because it's uh, quite a facility, but you, I want to make sure your kids and yourselves, if you're doing it, uh, come out unscathed. Um, I attended the Miami-Dade League meeting earlier this month. Um, Jordan uh, gave a great presentation on the school resource officer um, program, which the chief mentioned as well, and I think it's a great benefit to the town. And we are, you'll see as we go further into the agenda that our neighboring communities are also cooperating on this as well. So these are some really good uh, opportunities for the you know, communities that uh, surround us to cooperate with us for the benefit of all of our children in particular. Um, I'll be at the Florida League of Cities meeting in Hollywood for part of the time. I'm on one of the policy committees, which I've been on for about five or six years now, finance, taxation, and personnel <coughs> policy. It's a good program for your elected officials to be on some of these committees because um, we identify important policy issues and prioritize issues that we can address with the legislators from here or when we're in Tallahassee to, you know, again, to protect home rule and other issues. And um, some of you may have had a brief power outage yesterday. Yep. Yep. Um, I think it was pretty much townwide. But um, you can go on FPL's website and put in your email address. And, you know, as soon as the power went out, I got an email. Ten minutes later when the power went back on, I got another email telling me that my power was back on. So it's good to know because even if you're not home, you'll know if your power has been on and off and so forth. So it's a good program. Uh, to sign up for. Keep your phone charged, though. Right, right. <laughs> exactly. Otherwise, right. getting online is a little more difficult. Yeah, just to tell you, it wouldn't have been so bad had the power not gone off, like in the bottom of the seventh inning, and, and the Marlins had the bases loaded. Which has only happened, what, once, once year? <laughs> you were winning, that's it, everything went off. Okay, I'll try and keep pretty quick. Um, first of all, welcome back to everybody who was away for the summer. Uh, I hope, like everybody else, we're looking forward to another great school year. Um, Everybody here, as far as was explaining to you, definitely use the skate park. It's a wonderful new facility. The other thing I would remind you is that we don't just do that with one community. We also still have the Miami Shores Aquatic Center that you can use. So great suggestion. Take the kids, go on the, uh, on the skate park, and then head over to Miami Shores and use the aquatics facility. Shower so, first. Shower first. <laughs> That's a good, good idea. Um, but the fact is, it's a wonderful facility over there as well. It's a great time to use it. It's hot out. It's good to get the kids out of the sun and into the water. Um, we're going back now two months, so we had no meeting last uh, month. But uh, so the month prior, I also attended the pizza with the with the police. Uh, again, great event, Kathleen. You did it well again. It's a, just very consistent with that. Uh, I'll be attending the league meeting this the convention later on this week, and I concur with everything Bob said. It's good. I'm on one of the committees as well. It's good for us to keep involved. That way, we have a better voice for you in Tallahassee. Good evening. I want to first of all welcome everybody back and also congratulate Jordan on a job well done. He worked diligently and hard for a very long time to get um, that skate park going and um, kudos to you and of course to the rest of the council for supporting him in that endeavor. I want to let you know school begins on Monday so if you are going off to work please leave a little earlier and be a little cautious. There are going to be new parents coming to the school 
people who it's their first time going and i am sure they're going to be parking in that we've made um, into the parking garage but if they happen to park in the wrong spot please give you know be nice tell them they're not parking in the right spot for the first day and then please call town hall and let them know and we will try to take care of it right ron Absolutely. Also, I've gotten a lot of calls about dogs and dogs on leashes. And if dog you, what? On leashes. There's a lot of dogs that are not on leashes, and um, there are some owners that have dogs that are a little more aggressive than other dogs, and so you need to put your dogs, please, when you're walking your dogs, on a leash. It is not okay for you to have your dog off the leash and expect other people to have their dogs on the leash. So please, please try, when you take your dog out, have your dog on the leash. Yeah, and, pick up after. and of course, always pick up after your dog. Um, okay, thank you. Okay, so let's move forward to our public comments. Kathleen. Speaking of dogs, I was going to be an Irish pit bull, but I'm not going to be tonight. <laughs> And that's thanks to this council. This is an amazing council, I have to tell you, including the attorneys and most of all, including Ron Watson, because I, w I had a major problem and it was, it was resolved. And you know who you are that helped me and I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Anyway, I have a couple of issues. Um, the scholarship that we gave to Miami Senior High, the thousand dollars, do we uh, do we reciprocate that to the uh, the the Anderson child that won the scholarship for Bay Harbor Islands? And stop the clock, because I want an answer on that. What? I'm sorry. What was the point? In the in the June issue of the News Wave. A thousand dollars was given to uh, oh, a the child. Uh, the uh, by the way, rightfully deserved. At Miami Senior High. I don't Miami know what Beach. his name Miami was. Beach Miami High. Beach. Senior Miami High. Beach. Excuse me. Miami Beach Senior High. My question is: Do we do the same for our child? Uh, 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 I think the guy's name was Anderson. He was our resident. He's our resident. He was our resident. We went down and and we um, presented it to him, but he was our resident. But why did we take a picture of that beautiful kid with his parents in the? news wave. What, did we or did we not? We didn't. Anderson did, not, did, not, show did not show to up to the meeting. Uh, we the, invited him to come. Right. And he, really? We, yeah. And he did not. And he got a, and, and, the, and he got a thousand dollars. Is that correct? No. It was the, the junior um, the junior year kid in Miami Beach that got the thousand I know. I saw that. Yes. Yeah. What yeah. about our kid? Uh, he is not in high school. He's, he's he usually a, in high, the high school student the high is the one that gets, gets the scholarship. Junior. Right. He's a junior uh, because I spoke to the parent yeah, and there was no recognition of that child, not a picture, nothing for being an outstanding student. The parents were uh, constantly trying to get in touch with them by email to both parents by phone call we, uh, we, we tried and tried and tried we did not get a response right. the other child is a junior in high school the scholarship is to go to college rightfully uh, so that's, that's what it's 100 percent agree right but i just wanted to bring that to your attention it should be reciprocal mm -hmm. that's number one number two oh the clock is running out i should have stopped the clock um <laughs> i think uh council that we should update some of our codes um, you know, I brought the uh, the seawall to your attention not too long ago. Prior to that, I brought the bridge to your attention. You took care of it, and now we have a problem with cement floors in our in our uh, in our condos. Thanks to Ron, thanks to the council, thanks to uh, the, the codes are not very clear. They're old, and I think they need to be updated. And I think follow-up is very, very important. I want to thank Ron Wasson for taking care of it and other council people for uh, the many people I harassed this weekend. So thank you for that. Um, the Marine Patrol. Uh, I see that it's on the agenda. I would like, as, as uh, a part of the Parks and Rec Committee, that we keep this boat and that we give it to our children so that they can see who lives under the water. Take them for little rides. You know, stop. Uh, what do you think of that, guys? Stop the clock. 
<laughs> don't give it away. Don't sell it. You're talking about the, about the existing boat to keep the boat. You're, about, yeah, keeping, uh, you're getting a new one. I see it on the agenda. Yes. Let me just say, we've, we talked about that once before, and I think Ron was talking to us about maintenance on it being too high, because I, I thought at the very least we could use it as a training uh, boat as well, but I think that was the issue. Ron? Just to, yeah, the new boat, if, if it gets approved tonight, will take anywhere from six to eight months before it's delivered. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the Marine Patrol or the police department does train people on the boat that they have now. The idea was to sell it. It has The boat has value, not as a rescue boat, but it's, it's really more of a tug or a work boat. Um, I know the police department, and I'll speak for Sean, anybody, anytime the kids want to go out or... They can arrange yeah. that. They can arrange rights, you know. Let's you know, like a let's, let's see something like it that. It would be so wonderful. Right. You know, I will, let's see the insurance. Let's see the insurance costs and maintenance costs and get an idea of what it would. I, I, I think he's talking about. I, he's talking about if they want to go on the new boat, not no, no, no the no, old no, one. No, no, forget. No, no, I'm talking about the new boat. The like, new oh no, I'm not talking about, about the new one. The old boat. I'm talking about the old boat. I think Ron's talking about if they want to go on the new boat because the old boat. Well, that could be good too, but I think you want the old boat. They either either one. If they want to go out, we'll take them. Do you know how many the kids would love to see who lives under the water? Would not be wonderful for the parks? I have to say, I was a proponent to keep the old boat, and I think it was July Fourth weekend. I saw it go by my dock with an engine up because, you know, with, when they get to be a certain age, they really do get expensive. So, you know, I don't know if we want to do that. I, I just want to get the idea of what the cost would be as far as insurance and maintenance on, on the old boat before we decide whether to sell it. Next question. Really? Versus, the value, it's a versus the value of selling it also. Right. I want right. to exactly, exactly what the cost would be, what, yeah. what the cost would be and what, yeah. the, what we'd get yeah. in. We spend about a thousand dollars a month between docking it and then, make, you know, cleaning the bottom. And just the regular day-to-day, -day, like oh. Kelly saw, they saw the engine up, that pump, that the hydraulic pump that lowers the engine up and down, that cost almost a thousand dollars to fix. Yeah. No, and they're not, they're, it's just that it's a, it's, that's I just want the kids to see what lives under the water. I think it would be really nice because we're talking about right now paddle boards and all okay, kinds well, of goodies at the committee. Get, we'll just get the numbers and then we'll go. Yeah. Okay. 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 And lastly, this is interesting and, and I hope I don't go over the time. I have a, my family owns property at the Mantel, which is an Art Deco, beautiful place off of Pine Tree Drive. I don't know if you're familiar with the building. And it was very interesting because I was there and um, one of the, one one of the uh, board members of that building came up to me and said, because I had to introduce myself, they said, you're from Bay Harbor Islands? I said, yes. And they said, do you know that your town is in debt and that Miami-Dade is going to be taking over your town? I said, I beg your pardon. And I gave them lip service like you would not believe. <laughs> so for the record, can you kind of clarify that? Because I, first yeah, of all, I don't think count. it's true. Yeah, the wrong We're perfectly fine. Right. Yeah, that's what I thought. I think there are things but I, that was there something there that was said to me at, 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 at the Mantel. I, I think they were referring to oh, another municipality to that was in the news. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to go on the record. Yeah. Thank you. Francis, Newhart. Uh, Francis Newhart, 1060 Kane Concourse. Um, why has Bay Harbor Island become taxation? without representation on the East Island, with buyers purchasing new million dollar condos and their 2018 real estate taxes skyrocketing, skyrocketing at 126% and last year, 2017, increasing 156%. Did services, safety issues, and usage of our shared RKB public park basketball and tennis courts at the RKB public school actually improve town residents and their children's quality of life? Has Bay Harbor Island government made poor decisions and allowed for massive religious institutions and or nonprofits? Why have they not, not controlled these particular non-conforming usages, religious institutions and nonprofits from destroying profitable usages on the East Island? and destroying property values and tax base. Now we have Church by the Sea taking over approximately two acres of prime real estate with only 80 active members purchasing for 20 million. 2016 real estate taxes were 80,000 per year. That has now dropped to only 16,000 per year without even starting to build their approved massive and alleged subsidized 85,000 square feet 
religious institution with non-recorded nor approved by council ancillary usages who will be paying and cleaning up the petroleum waste on this property who will be paying their impact fees for the plus or minus 168 of people for proceeding being fed for their new restaurant fellowship dining hall when town residents can barely su uh, survive paying these increase or the restaurants can barely survive paying these increased taxes you can see many of the restaurants have closed in our community now we will be paying who will be paying when the church allegedly does not have to pay taxes for other bay harbor island provided services for alleged missing hundred required parking spaces maintaining our roads and bridges providing levels of service etc nor keeping their alleged promises of building a new shared parking garage why does it appear like our secular small town real estate is being swallowed up by large religious institutions and nonprofits while adjacent towns appear to have profited from our misfortunes when will this all end or are we purposely heading into bankruptcy thank you thank you okay let's move on to our consent agenda I'll move it. Second. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Well, we need a poll vote. We need a poll vote. Poll vote. Poll vote. Poll vote. Um, Councilmember Yaffe? Four. Councilmember Chicoche? Four. Councilmember Salver? Four. Councilmember Reed? Four. Councilmember Leonard? Four. Vice Mayor Fuller? Four. Mayor Bruder? Four. Okay, so now let's go on to we're doing number five. five. Item five. Approval in our agreement. Approval of an agreement with Miami-Dade School Board for an address verification system. The agreement will be in, put into place to verify addresses for students attending Ruth K. Broad Elementary um, School and would require reporting to the town. The reason I pulled it, there were two issues in particular. One, I've got a problem in Craig. On page two, it talks about here, it says, School board shall have no financial obligation or liability. And in this instance, they are administering a portion of it. I don't have any intention of allowing the town to be the sole uh, provider for essentially coverage in the event of any liability, if any issue that they take. If there's gross negligence on the, negligence on the part of the school, or if there's any form of negligence whatsoever on the part of the school, I want them to be liable, not us. You want them to what? I didn't hear the last thing. I want them to be liable, not us. In other words, if they do something wrong, I don't have any, any intention of having, having our town essentially be on the hook for it. Which section is that? Five. five this eight. is section two, page two. Five, section five, two, yes. it's section two A. I'm sorry, two, two B. Two B. Page, I'm sorry. It's page two. No, I had a couple of comments in there. Yeah, I want, I want to. Two B. Two B, under funding, if you look back. So that has to be addressed. Right, Second, as far as the time provision for people to come in, you know, uh, obviously, you know, we have to do everything we can to try and, and minimize the number of people that are coming into the school properly. But when it comes to verification documents, I've got a problem here with the only time to bring it in is between 8 a.m. and 3.30 or 3 o'clock on a weekday. There are plenty of people that are working that don't have the ability, people that are living in Bay Harbor that don't have the ability to take off time during a work day from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. We need to have at least one or two Saturdays where they can come in or, or Sunday or whatever it is to be able to verify documents. But they can't because the school. I know, and that's right. It's, what about this? Right, this, this is a school. We then can't. the school can do something in the evening, one or two weeks. They there, can't there's got to be a way to work it out. They're not the school. The school system is not going to do that. When you when you register for school, this the school is 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 has the school hours, you know, and when you register your kids for school, you register your school, your children Monday through Friday. Vice Mayor, just wow. wanted to let you know, we definitely wanted that. We spoke to them about it, and they were pretty adamant that their hours, you know, we told them, is there any way to extend it later in the day or maybe come in earlier? And um, they were pretty set into those times for some reason. The truth of the matter is, if you... Just to let you know, we it wasn't like we didn't talk position, about it. You're in this position. You're in this position because the probability is that you're there because 
No, I understand. But the fact is, there are going to be some people that may have to come in for verification that I don't think they should necessarily need, need to lose a day of work. At, you know, if they're going to lose their job or anything else like that on a last minute notice and yeah. you've got to come in next week on a Tuesday and you've got to be there at 8 o'clock. It's a shame they won't work with them. I mean, they have PTA meetings and there are two or three be, employees of the school at right. 7 o'clock at night. I, there's got to be impressed. some way for them to come in at a different hour. And that's the one thing. Whether we do it, you know... I, I don't think that's an hour problem. I think that's like a their problem. Honestly, well, I mean, I hate to say I'm callous. Residents. But it's the residents. That's, a, that's what I'm well, trying to protect here. These are our... No, but not... Right but, if, but if something happens yeah, well, it's a resident... That's when, going to be stuck. Yeah, but when your kid is in school and, you know, there's an issue, they need, you, you know, your, your, your parent, com well, some, I guess the parent-teacher conferences are at night. Um, no, they're not. Not necessarily. No, but you can also, but you can, but the thing is you get to schedule them a little bit more yourself. Sometimes if a teacher says, listen, I need to talk to a student, so I'm sure talk to you, you can schedule it. Here, if the school board says we need you in on X day and you need to come in, at, you know, at 8 a.m. or 9 a.m., there are people on the island that legitimately have their kids in school that I think there needs to be but some there, flexibility. There, well, kid, I mean, kid, you know, parents say, on the island that legitimately have their kids in school, you they're not. They're not going to be part of this program. They're going to. They're going to. Their well, letters are going to be sent. Well, their kids are going to be registered, and they're going to be legit. Right, you know, there's not going to be any bouncing back right, and forth hoping. with phony addresses and this and that. These, Gosh, these these people, say, the population of people that are going to be having to respond to this are the ones that are most likely using fraudulent to I understand that, but I'm trying to protect the few that might get stuck in it where it's a problem for them. We're working people that cannot make it in the middle of a work day. That's my issue on that. Okay. But I understand your point. I understand everything there. I'd like to see if and make another shot at seeing if there's some way to have a secondary time. But the main concern goes back to the first thing I said to you, which is the liability. Well, That's first of all, I'll say the, the original notification, please go anytime you want, I say. Um, the original notification was actually until 1230. So this is actually better than if you're on those notices from the school. Yeah. You had from 830 or till 1230. <laughs> so this is, this is an improvement of almost double. So I'll put that out there. Secondarily, I mean, I get called as a parent to a whole bunch of different meetings. You have the capability to say to the school, listen, I need to move it to Thursday or I need to move it to Wednesday. And most of the time they'll work with you on those times. But I'll also tell you this, if I want something from the school, I will make it a priority to make sure that I'm there. And this comes from someone who used to work an hour and 15 minutes away. Like I worked around my life to make it work. And I think if you if you really want your kid in the school and you want to make sure your kid gets a good education, you're, you'll make sure that you're there. Okay. I have some other issues with this um, when we're done talking about this particular item. So if we can come back. Okay, so let's, let's go point by point. So the first point is, to um, 2B. 2B. So, yeah, I, 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 okay, but let's go point by point so that we don't have bounce around. 2B. 2B. Yeah. Let's yeah. talk about 2B. Yeah, I, I, when I read that, I maybe I inferred it differently than, than what Josh said because it says no financial obligation or liability in connection with the plan. I, I thought they're referring to the liability of, of providing it if, they, if we didn't pay. Not not the liability right, of, the of right the way it's yeah no, I, I know the way it's worded I think it's just worded very poorly right. but I don't think that's the their that intent. Same way you did, Jordan. That's yeah. how I read it too. Yeah, I don't I don't think that's their intent because we're we're uh, this actually ironically happened with the SRO issue. They're they're not where there's um, not allowed to indemnify another government entity in regards to an agreement. So th this actually was something that came up. So I, I don't think this is what their intent I is. I understand, but has, so it has to be just clarified. Yeah, they just need to right, but wordsmith that's why, it. That's yeah. yeah. Okay. So we can clarify well, that. I had a number of different questions. I mean, the Section 1A, I mean, this, the term of this agreement is for the 2018 2019 school year, but at yes. the next to last sentence, it says it renews for the 2018 2019 school year. I didn't really understand that. Well, also, it says that you're supposed to have the, the uh, letters out 30 days before school. Right, right. That's but I, I so I'm not sure why. I mean, somebody just needs to look at the date in 1A. I don't want to Enjoy belabor that. Enjoy again on this. <laughs> in on 1F, um, by March 1st of every year, address verification letters shall be sent to all parents. Why March 1st? I mean, school is starting right in August. Like yeah, it starts next yeah, week. No, but why are letters going out in March? I'm, I'm not sure what the Maybe I don't understand that. Why? Why would they go out in March? I mean, you're, the school well, started in August, and you're waiting until March. Sent out. Still in, during the school year. No, I understand yeah, that, but, but they've been there for. Right. But the students have been there right. since. This right. is if, if, I agree. If, if, if we wait till March, technically we can't. They don't get removed for that. School right. Year. Right. No. I, if if, if I may, one of the reasons why, and I'm sorry, uh, Stephanie, one of the reasons or the reason why they gave at that at the meeting when we spoke to them is. 
during the beginning of the school year, there's a lot of movement. Kids come in and out. Um, and by March, they have a very good. There's not not a lot of movement. Well, so that's but, when, that's you know, you're half, you're more than halfway through the right, and they through the school year anybody. at that they point. They won't move anybody anyway. In that, uh, well, I don't know. By March, they're not moving anybody. They will in the beginning. Because at the beginning, they, they will. Beginning. So if we want to change the date and go back to them, we need to do it right now. I think like November first. I think that's reasonable. It gives them plenty of time right. to you settle that they what they have. Write the letters, print them, mail them. Well, give them process time, whatever it takes for process time for them to do it. No, no, but do that so that if they have to remove a kid, you know what I'm saying? So that if they have to remove a child, that way I, I agree, November yeah. might work, that it'll be for second semester. So after after the holiday, they would be in. So we would like to change, let's see if one F. One F. One F. What's the date? Bye. I think November 1st is fair. I, I would say push it back because once you get closer to the end of the year, then the question is, well, you can't move them because of testing. Remember, this what, This is what happened last mm -hmm. school year. So once you get into that and say, so, well, it's the, the well, testing. October then, I mean. So, I would say as soon as. October 1. Okay. Yeah, you know. How about October right. 15? Because, of, because I'll tell you what, September is, people Coffee. are still registering right. and. No, no. October. October 1st. Say October 15th. All right, that's fine. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. I have a question about 2A. Okay. Is everybody in concessions for October 15th? Yeah. Yes. Okay? Date one. Date one. Sure. Kelly? I'm fine. Okay. Everybody okay? I think it's a soul. Right. Okay, I, right. I have a question on 2A as well. Right. So if you well, want it says to the school board shall obtain the consent from parents who register the student prior to conducting an address verification using, right. using the software. So you what if a parent point. refuses to consent? What's What happens? I mean, what it, it, autom it automatically triggers the... Uh, the next step, right? The next step. The next step? Okay. So if I go in and I say, I'm no, not I'm signing. not going to sign this? Yeah, you're what automatically... Is, the next step is, is what? To come in and prove that you... Yeah. What, that. what proof is necessary? Because I read through this, and what I see that they want, unless I'm reading it wrong, is that they will accept an FPL bill, right. a lease or a deed or a rental agreement, or a letter from your homeowner's association or leasing office. Right. But when they come in... It will also, the, the school will have run them through Nexus Lexix or the other program. Mm -hmm. It's not true. No, it is true. When they come in for that interview, they oh, might be, they, they, okay. when they come in, we'll have our information, they'll have their Ron, information. Mm -hmm. Well, what I'd like to see is if, the, if someone comes in with a rental agreement of any sort or anything along those lines, I'd like to see proof of at least two months payment of the rent because that's one of the problems. I think you and I discussed that, is a lot of people nowadays, they'll get on Microsoft Word, print out a lease and everything else, and it's done. I want to see proof of payment. You know what he's talking about? Or, or so, I mean, listen, even, and I, I kind of go back to like what, pardon? Don't go, no. I, I kind of go back to like just logicality, right? So what what is the value to me as a person, and what am I willing to risk to put my child in a district that they don't live in? I'm probably willing to risk $250 a month on my FPL bill, right, because it's a lot less than I would pay for private school. But what about a state-issued ID? I mean, it's, it's really something so logical. I'm not willing to risk my homestead, right? I'm not willing to risk, you know, my, my capability to refinance my mortgage to be able to get my kid into a school district. Like, why can't we just have something simple where it is you bring your state-issued ID and to prove that you live there along with one of these other things? To me, that makes a lot, it's a lot simpler. I'll tell you why, because you can go to the DMV and change your <coughs> address very easily. But it triggers And then you something. can bring it in. But then it triggers something. You lose your homestead. No, you don't. You <coughs> absolutely don't. do. When I bought my house, when I bought my condo three years ago, I could not get my homestead my first year because my husband hadn't changed his state issue. <coughs> yeah, but you've got a lot of renters, and a renter doesn't make a difference. There's no homestead. That's the issue there. Right, but if I live somewhere else, it does to me. We have a number of people that live right across the other bridge and that own homes, right, right. in in that so beautiful if little community. No, if, you're, if, you're, if you've got a home somewhere, then yes, but otherwise the rental is... Well, well, also keep in mind, you know, one of the problems when, when you know, I've, I've spoken to the school system about this, you know, they, they have a very different perception than we do, unfortunately. We have a perception of, of getting the students that don't belong out. That's not really their perception. Their, percep their, their perception is, is that they're acquiescing and, and doing this as a courtesy, but the reality is, you know, the process is a flawed process. I can tell you from experience, when, when I put my own kid in, in VPK 
and you know the the person that that went in there and I got caught the person red-handed the person had just like Kelly said they changed their driver's license I mean it's so easy to change a driver's license the person had a driver's license changed and you know and they and, and in fact actually they didn't have it changed and they remind oh by the way you have to change your driver's license and they did it the way they got caught was the lease the lease that was signed was actually not signed by the person who owned the apartment and and it was only by the matter that they were you know that they turned it in and I made Dr. Rodriguez actually look at it and compare it that that they found they caught the person the point I'm trying to make is that the, these people are not going to go above and beyond the way that we're discussing it this is going to be a fight this is not going to be easy and a lot of the things you're talking about they're not going to do I'm just ask Sunnyvale's Beach am I right Ron but this has been an ongoing issue. They, they're, they're, they're very strict over there. <laughs> no, they I, are. They are, but, but it's they not... They're stricter it's than they are by us. And I have to tell you, today is a perfect example. I called today. Yeah. Did I not? And I got pushed back. And I gave them information that was given to me. And I got pushed back from, from the school. Yeah. Well, I, can I just have one other comment? The... It's a two-step process, right? You, the welcome letter goes out, now we're going to say October 15th, and if a letter comes back for whatever reason, and I have to tell you, you know, the U.S. Postal Service, I don't know, a lot of, I, I send, you know, correctly addressed <laughs> mail, you know, from my office, and, you know, every so often it comes back, even though it's perfectly addressed. Um, so the second step then is the verification letter, which is, has to go out by certified mail um, to the parents at the designated address at the expense of the town. But if you've ever sent certified mail and you're, and you're working, you'll never see that certified mail letter. Never. Because even if they put a pink slip in your mailbox, I mean, you've got to go down to the post office and pick it up. So what I do when I send out certified mail is I send out a copy by regular mail. So at least, you know, there's a possibility that the parents will see it. Because also with respect to the return of the certified mail, sometimes the post office gives, they make a couple of attempts. So I've sent out certified mail and gotten that, you know, when, when it, when the, somebody didn't accept it, it's come back like two or three months later. Yeah, the green card does not um, come back quickly. No, but it's not even the green card, but if, if somebody doesn't, if somebody refuses the certified mail or doesn't pick it up, or they're not home to sign for it, the post office will eventually return the certified mail, but sometimes it takes months. So I think that under those circumstances, that really a, a copy should go out by regular mail, so at least if there's an issue, sure. the parent will get the verification letter and then they can come into the Maybe school. Maybe send it home with the child. Send it home with the child. Well, well uh, I, I wouldn't do that. Sure because, that. But, I, but, I, but you know, you raise a good point, though. You know, first of all, sending things by certified mail is way, 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 you know, out of date. Um, but I mean, we're going to do postal service. I don't see why we don't do priority mail with a track. And if we have, if we can do the system where essentially when they go out, you can track that it was delivered. That way, they don't right. have to sign it's for true. it. It's there. And you can print or get an electronic thing just showing that it was delivered at whatever address was. Yeah, it's the same was, cost, there. I think. It's yeah, it's the same cost, or maybe even maybe in a buck less. You know, uh, the only difference is you don't have to wait three months for a green card. You know, we could discuss this from now till the cows come home, and the school board is going to do whatever they want to do. Yeah, we're sure. pretty, well, yeah, we, we know that. So, and I mean, just, I think we owe it to the families. You know, I mean, no, not us. The school board owes it to the families to make sure that you know if you're going to try implement an address verification system that you know that those letters are going to get to the yeah. to the home uh, and you know, you know regular mail or priority mail you know that they're going to be delivered most likely yeah. my, my, <laughs> my, I, you know my personal opinion is that just phase one we're like mailing the welcome letters and if they come back then a new process right. is initiated is flawed in and of itself mm -hmm. because you know things will sit in the mailbox things will get thrown yeah. out uh, it just, I mean, it's just... Isaac, just so you know, they out. got they got a lot more letters back than they thought they were going to get when they did that welcome letter for the new principal. Last year? Yeah. yeah. They, oh, How we, many letters did they get back? Yeah. Over 100. But there's also, correct me if I'm wrong, I read in here, there's a, a fail-safe on that, too, because that was my original concern as well, that if they get um, reasonable information that a child does not live in the district, then it also activates this plan, correct? Yes. I can so refer is, them. So there is something that we can do to move that along as well. It's not just the... the can I ask, has anybody spoken to our representative on the school board, Dr. Karp? I have. Yes. Yeah. And can he help advocate for this? Does he so agree he, with it? Or? He does. I mean, he, I mean, I have talked to him. He does agree with it. He has talked. That's how we got to this point. But it begins with the principal. 
The principal is the, the, the gentleman on the front line, and I don't feel that he okay. is. And how about the PTA? Do they support this? The PTA has got to walk, walk a very fine line here. Yeah, yeah, we're 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 support the kids. I mean, I sit on the PTA board, and I mean, I, I don't see anyone against this. I, I think what the issue is that, the, you know, the school board is this huge bureaucracy, and there's a lot of people in between the guy who's the principal of your kid's school and the people that actually make these decisions. And talking to the people that make these decisions, you know, they're, they're not the people that, that are in the classroom, so to speak. Right. So let's just, you know, where, where I would advise us to take it is, let's, you know, make some minor changes, take it, and then where we see the flaws, let's go back and, and, and request more changes. Because let me tell you, we start chopping this up and they're going to say no. Well, right, hold on, Frank, it's already made. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I, I know, but we, I wanted to know. Let's yeah. go back for a second. Yeah. Fra Frank, we talked about it when we talked about their, that they're in violation yeah. of our agreement of course. for the maximum number of right. students. And at that time, I advocated putting them on notice so that at least we have a little more bargaining position. I think there was a little bit of pushback on that and said, said, said everybody here said pretty much let's do a little bit more friendly. But the fact of the matter is we're not getting what we want and if we need to get what we want I think it's time to use a little bit of that muscle in that agreement against them sure let, let, let me take a step back so we're all on the same page we they had provided a basic agreement this agreement as it set as it sits now was basically my redraft of it I mean the whole document was redlined and then we had two meetings thereafter and and for all intents and purposes they're required to to follow their own uh, rules and procedures, and you can see that in the NOLA.com. Um, but everything else we dictated to them, and they really accepted far more than I ever thought that they would. For example, all of our uh, all of our definitions they agreed to. They also agreed that if there's any credible information, they have to act on it. They also agreed to to uh, bear the expense of the mailings as well. Um, you know, everything that we asked for that wasn't violative of their own rules, they agreed to. They actually agreed originally. They only wanted to address the new, uh, the mailing to the new students coming right. in. Yeah. And they agreed to mail it to everybody no, in the school. No, and I think this is a great beginning. However, yeah. it's only as good as the people who are willing to enforce it. So I think the conversation really needs to go to the person who has to enforce it. So whether we, you have a discussion or whether the superintendent or whether you, me, and, and we have a discussion with the principal and the and, and Mr. Yeah. Buenos, but somebody needs to have a discussion that goes I, well, like... And it has to happen now and also Mr. Right. one thing and the other thing is because we don't want to wait another I month. I don't believe me. he wants I think we need to it. do it. And then let's right. do it. You so, have to so let's put it in. ratify it, and then let's have that discussion with them, saying, "Okay, this is the agreement. Now we expect you to enforce but it." But then we sure. have a special meeting. In about Since we're paying for it, I think the priority mail no, thing was very can't good. Wait another month. No, I don't want to. I want to then call. I right. want to go in and have a conversation with the principal and ask. Um, Mr. Buenos to come to that meeting with Ron and sit down and say, here it is, right, I, here I it is. I understand that, but once we have the Let's terms and move. we have everything, we have to be able to vote on it to make sure we have it, and I don't think it works if we're waiting for another month to be able to do that. No, we just need to, to vote on this. Well, this is a mess. Yeah. Well, it's well, not. Well, hold on, hold on. Hold on. It's, hold on. It's, you know, it's as good as we're going to get right now. We no. know it's, it's already weekend. August. Um, well, that's the problem. To, that's what I'm saying. Gosh. It's already August. Right. We that's have to the take problem. what we can get, and this is what we got. I mean, we can't wait. Right. This, is already, this is already stale. Right. Well, right. One thing. Well, hold on, hold on. This is, as far as I'm concerned, much better, particularly if you like rewind back to our meetings that we had with them and what that dialogue was about and what they were going to do. This, this is Switzerland. Like this is so much better. Is it perfect? No, there are things that I think we all would, would change and I think we need to talk through what those are. But as far as I'm concerned, we, we need to get it executed and then we need to get it enforced. But we have to get it to where we need to be. But this is this is a far. This is so much better than where we I'm were not, six months I'm ago. I'm not debating that it's it's an improvement of what we have. No question. I just think there are certain flaws in here that I think need to be addressed. And let's and walk so through them. The procedure them. has to be you know has to be. Uh, okay, followed. right. But, but we can change. We I'm sure. Are there right, any other changes that anybody wants? Yeah, yeah, I think there are very minor things that they're going to be agreeable to. Okay. We've, they've agreed to everything they can agree yeah. to. 
other than what they're bound to. Okay. I think the, the, has anybody moved this? I'm sorry? Is it, I'll yeah. move it. Yes. Because I was going to say, well, I was going to say, well, I was going to say, let's move it subject to the following changes. Okay. Right. And Which then is, go from there. So the one was October 15th. What other ones do we have? Right. Uh, I, had a, I had a question because this seems like it was crafted specifically like for one person or a very small population where it, where it talks about the um, parties acknowledge and agree that children of active military personnel assigned to the Department of the Army United States Southern Command. Yeah. I don't know why it's limited I, to the United I States Army. Yeah. What about the Navy? What about the Marines? No. You know, what about you know, okay. the Coast Guard? Or well, whatever? there is a state statute they, that that just they, the Army. No, no, no. It's no. for all military. All, forces. all, all forces. veterans. Forces. All veterans are. There's no veterans. Not active duty. Duty. Yeah, active no, duty. Right. Yeah, there, there, there's um, there's no limitation as to where so, they can. So, so I can't. I mean, well, I'm saying that's easy. Yeah, that's, that's easy. an easy well, thing to change. We 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 allow them to draft that provision, and we accepted it because it's it's part of the state statute. Yeah. Uh, but and that's how it reads. It's the kind state of statute ridiculous. says the army. It, it's I let them draft that based upon whatever they wanted of it. it to be. The state statute says it's all right. the armed forces. But yeah. For whatever reason, the school board likes to deal with Southern Command portion. Because but it's quite different. honestly, I'd be very. <laughs> I, I agreed to accept that language as they drafted it. Oh, I had the same question you did, but I said, be it, why are we going to expand it? <laughs> okay. All right, no, but I'm okay. saying because so one yeah, it's very specific. Okay, well, so we, we got that. So, so two A could work there in Homestead. Right. It's far. They could live here and work there. We'll, we'll work it. We're not going to kick anybody right. out for that. But okay, so two A though, I want I want to have that language revised. The the language that you wanted in there is that they're well, only two, required. Two minutes, in, in, in the event that they're grossly negligent? No, I mean, negligent in any way. I don't, it's not just grossly negligent. I want, because, in, in, look, if there's something that happens where, for whatever reason, they do something wrong and a kid gets kicked, I'm just, you know, it's a, this is a hypothetical. Someone gets kicked out, someone starts suing based on something the school board did as far as how they improperly did it. I don't want to pick up the tab. Well, there's uh, an indemnification yeah, there's provision, and that provision is very specific, that we're not indemnifying them for any of their negligence. but it's contradictory to the language here, so I just, just no, the, it a little bit. Two, two A the, has to do with the cost. Two B. Two B, two B has to do with That's the cost. That's what I thought. Okay. I know, but it's, yeah. not, it's not clear the way it's written. I yeah, but it. indemnification okay. would co cover a third party, not the parties. I, uh, two A, two B rather, deals with the parties vis-a-vis -vis themselves. The indemnification is a third party. Right, no, I, I'm happy to I tweak it. But the way it's okay. The way it reads okay. is sure. It is I'll idea. probably get rid of that first sentence, assuming that they'll allow for it. Okay. And instead of doing register the mail, we're going to do priority. priority but, but they priority. have to. Somebody has to go ahead and then check it because you're not going to get a green card back. They're going to have to verify, just go online and show that it was yeah, But don't that can happen over periods. Do they have to send it certified? Is that is Under that a requirement? I, I think the point is they want to know. They want to make sure that we want it. We would want it sent. No, no, no. What I'm saying is that I recall because again, when we originally talked to them, I recall that might have been one of their requirements. I'm not sure. So we don't want to say, hey, this is I one of our... Look, I wouldn't be surprised. There's still certain statutes on where I have to send things as, a legal, as an attorney by fax, and some people don't have them anymore. I said that one app that it's by US talk. mail. Um, we can certainly ask them the other item. Okay. Also, it, it'll have to depend upon what, what methodology that they use pursuant to their, right, to their regulations, their because they're, they're, they right, have verifying their own delivery. Yeah. Um, no disrespect to Jordan, but you're going to have to put Stephanie's name in there instead of Jordan's. Yeah, it's all good. Also, yeah, you know, we, we, dra we drafted this in February, right. 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 and it really went through a few machinations, and quite honestly, I couldn't get from them their own version so I could create a red line. So are, are exactly you also going to let us know, like, on a monthly, quarterly It says quarterly. Yeah, yeah there's, there's a specific report that we had them agree to. If you look at Exhibit D, they have to give us a report that has very specific data, yeah. including what was mailed, what was returned, home visits, students residing outside the boundary, transfer students, home school, and those granted an exception. That's fine. Okay. So we, we ask them for very specific information. Now, there are certain privacy limitations that they're bound to. Right. No, However, we, we, we yeah. Are, that's fine. So Stephanie, okay. call, call it. Oh, okay, I call for, wait, we have, um, no, that's just for this one. one. Okay, sorry. 
Okay. That's All right. So the changes, the changes were two, two B for to clean it. And October, October, October fifteenth. Okay. October fifteenth. Yeah. Okay. All right. Right. Okay. And priority mail and stuff so with, with some with some, some kind of and right. if possible. Right. 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 No problem. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Number six. Approval of a memorandum of understanding between Miami-Dade School Board to the School Board Police Department and the uh, Town of Bay Harbor Islands Police Department establishing guidelines for the placement of school-based law enforcement offices uh, at the Miami-Dade School uh, Public Schools. All right, all right. This, this will be so much easier than the last one. So um, there is a revised um, version on your desk and the only change is it's the last sentence, actually. Um, um, looking for the page three. Uh, let's see. So page three. Was it page three? Term of MOU. Ah, there we go. Yeah, the last sentence. Yeah, the last sentence was changed. Um, this was a version that that several of the other cities wanted. Um, the original, the one that that's in your packet. Um, says that either party can terminate the MOU um, individually, and that's not to our favor. It, would, it behooves us to have it be mutual because this is a multi-year agreement. Th this allows us to renew for three years. Um, just to take you, you know, just you know, because the so last item. So, 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 what do you want to? No, I, I want the, the revised version to to be approved. Okay. Um, where where this came from, you know, just to take a, a step back, the we moved nobody's moved. It. I'll move it. Move in. Okay, I'll good. So we move in second. So the um, you got it. Yeah, no, I, no. Jordan, let's no, I, you got your revised version. No, but I, just so you know, one one thing that's that's gonna be good with this is that uh, obviously Ron was alluding that not every. Um, is that for both? Is Victor's that for both? Because you had for six or for seven. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, wait, wait, wait. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Well, you had an. Yeah, I just had one quick. Okay. Um, questions. I actually had a comment for staff. Okay. This, I mean, this is going to have, we're on number six, right? Yeah. 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 This is going to have a budget impact. And yes. It, and and it, why wasn't the cover sheet filled out illustrating to us what the budget impact is? Well, seven will, will show the, the budget. Seven doesn't have it on there either. Yeah, no, seven doesn't. doesn't have it on there either. I don't know. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, good question. The budget impact about seven thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We we estimate it to the high it's, side. Yeah. It's it. This is a little, you know, this is something that I think for the first year, it'd be good to to look at the first year and see what the real cost is. I think Bay Harbor Islands is is probably one of the better cities in the county, looking at the cost and being able to pay the lowest amount. Um, uh, just because not only are we one city, but because it, it, with item seven, we're splitting it amongst three municipalities, and we're also using a reserve officer. You know, some cities are actually hiring new officers. So when you factor in the cost of a new officer, plus the uniforms, plus a car, plus the benefits, um, you know, you're talking about some cities, most cities said the cost was c close to $100,000 a year. We're looking at, what is it, 57000 so you right. know, we're treating this as a, a seasonal employee, right? And we'll be covering certain, just the regular withholding. Yeah. Uh, there won't be certain benefits that would normally come with somebody you would hire full time. Right. And the kids well, love him. Yeah. Well, and the yeah, benefit, of course, is it's having a, it's four. A perfect match. It's a win-win. Right. Right. But okay. just so you know, the one the, there's there's just before you you say yes, just see so everyone knows what we're getting ourselves into. The requirement that we're signing here is what they call bell to bell, which means. If Officer Brilliant's sick, another officer has to take his place. That's our that's our deal with the school system. Um, in addition to that, um, you know, Officer Brilliant's gonna gonna be our SRO. But also keep in mind, you know, one of the things that we were able to negotiate is they're gonna re, you know report to our school, uh, not the school board, but also but our police department, and that's really important. Right. So he's gonna report Great to job, the chief. Right. That's exactly what we want. Okay, exactly. all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Okay, number, number seven. seven. Number seven is approval of a memorandum of understanding between Surfside, Bell Harbor, and Bay Harbor Islands to share the cost to provide a police officer. Okay, so I'll move it. 
Second. Second. Right. Okay. All right, just real simple. Thank you look you. at the cost, we, we agree with the other municipalities that we're going to equally share the cost. And I don't know any other municipality in the county that is equally sharing the cost with cities that do not have a school. So this is actually a, a great thing to do for our community. So I'm in favor. I, I want to point out here, too, is that Thirty-five thousand dollars yes. was secured as reimbursement. So I want to I want to thank everyone thank who was involved in that. So we're only covering the difference with yes. that as yeah. well, and we're covering yeah. one, third one third of the, the difference. difference to yeah. that, which is huge. Yeah, and we're getting Jordan. a full-time SRO officer at the school. Well, thank we can you. Thank Jordan. Yeah, yeah, Jordan. Yeah. Well, so we're working on it. As well. Listen, there's a there's yeah, a lot of towns that have to thank Jordan. Jordan. Let me tell you something. No, uh, it's not. It's a, you know, just I know that the chief had mentioned that this was an unfunded mandate. And yes, it is. This is a partially unfunded mandate but just to you know for the public to understand the school board is not just shelling out 35 grand per elementary school on you know because of their goodwill and graces the you know the state you know after the tragedy at um, Parkland you know the state designated specific funds a uh, good large amount of funds statewide uh, in order to improve student safety at elementary schools. So this $35,088 is basically a, a, a one small portion of the allocation of that statewide protection budget um, that the Dade County school system got and are divvying it up amongst all their elementary schools. K through eight. Yeah. Right. They were their K through eights. The um, is it only K through no, it's it's elementary the, the and deal, K through eight, right? The deal is that the school board covers high schools and middle schools and, and cities were offered their elementaries and elemental. So we our K through eight was included. Right. So that's that's how it how it works. Right. But but keep in mind the school board only got ten million dollars. Right. This is At, for the cities we got four million. So the deal, the deal that we were able to strike with them is either 10 million, 2 million automatically goes to charters based on the per capita. So they, they, they only have 8 million. Out of 8 million, the school board keeps two. Then you're down to, to six, um, 6 million. Um, and they, you know, in essence, that $6 million was divided up between all the municipalities, which is about 25 out of the 34 that have schools, and the county. Keep in mind, all the schools in unincorporated date. Mm -hmm. So, the, so, and and then and then the deal, the deal that we were able to strike with the assistant superintendent, and the superintendent and his staff, was that out of the six million, no one group would take more than a third of the money. So, out of the six million dollars left, think about it. The county would have taken about half of it, about two point nine million, because of that cap, which our school board member um, rep for for the league was able to insert in there. It was capped at two million, so the county only got two million. That leaves us with four million. So because of that difference, each city that had a school was able to get thirty-five thousand eighty-eight dollars. I will also mention, and this is really important, just because we're getting money this year doesn't mean that we're getting money next year. Right. We have to fight. We have to fight to retain that. And right. leadership is aware of this. This is something that that should be on all all of our minds because one of the things I mentioned is. You can't take it away from the people. Once you put a police officer in the school, I don't think any parent's going to demand that you take the cop out and put a, a rent a cop. And I, when I think it's important, uh, you know, again, to go on record yeah. with the fact that this mandate was not upon the municipalities. Correct. This mandate was placed upon the Miami-Dade County public school system. Yep. So the public school system, you know, this public, the public school system kind of lobbied and worked yeah. the municipalities for them to get on board and create this partnership. And, you know, so, we, you know, like Jordan said, we don't know what's going to happen in subsequent years, but, um, you know, there's no guarantee that we're going to continue to get the subsidy um, going on. Well, you know, I'd just like to point out that uh, historically, there was a time when cities like Miami Beach that has four elementary schools had full-time regular officer SROs. And then over time, you know, you're pushing and pulling with the budget and they were cut. Right. And then it was reduced, it, it was nothing for a while, it was, uh, you know, civilians and retirees for a while. And in the 90s, with, with Columbine and these 
tragic, hostile situations, it changes everything. Yeah, but there was a time so, when schools were well funded. Now the state doesn't have enough funding. So well, you know, I mean, I, we might need to look at that so we can budget. You know, we might have to absorb more of it next year. But, and then we have to be flexible, really, because 20 years ago, this kind of thing just wasn't, wasn't known. Around. It wasn't around. Was and, you know, so the threats have changed. So, you know, we have to be very flexible. And, well, you know, there may be something that we don't know about right now that we'll be dealing with in five, ten years. Okay. So let's, I call, let's call. All right. All those in favor? Oh, it's a poll vote. Is it? Oh, no, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. Right okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, number eight? Not nine. Nine. Okay. Consideration and approval of an ordinance in second reading, amending the town code to provide enhanced outdoor lighting requirements. An ordinance of the town council of Tattle Bay Harbor Islands, Florida, amending chapter 10 of the town's code of ordinances and titles housing and modifying section 10.1 and 10.2, amending chapter 23 and title zoning and planning and modifying section 23.19 to provide enhanced outdoor lighting requirements, providing for severability, providing for codification, and providing an effective date. I'll move it. Second. Okay, any questions on the second? No. Nope. There's just one typo. Okay. Michael. Sir, <laughs> um, you have a under typo. exceptions, number four, exceptions. Let me get to it. Anyway. What page? It's not a number, but the second page. Oh, second it's the second page. Second. Oh, okay. It's highlighted, Michael. Yeah. The Got it. Well, what page? Well, there's no exceptions left, and you took it out. Oh, the exceptions. Uh, well, the paragraph that says exceptions. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just tell me when you're there, and I'll just tell you what the word is. Or you can have my copy if you don't. Before. before. Right. Michael? Michael, here. Michael, here. Yeah. The word may is missing. The town oh. manager, with approval from council, may waive. You left out the word waive. Okay. It doesn't it. waive or modify. Yeah. Okay. Here, Michael. Take my copy. Yeah, his starts with the dinosaurs, and then See? it gets to... <laughs> oh, I got it. Okay? Just take that. Okay. Just open to make it sure that that's corrected. All right. Okay. Anything else? No. Nope. Okay. Um, Hold up. Hold up. Yes. Um, Councilmember Yaffe? Four. Councilmember Chikoshi? Four. Councilmember Silver? Four. Councilmember Reed? Four. Councilmember Leonard? Four. Vice Mayor Fuller? Four. Mayor Bruder? Four. Unanimous. Okay, number 10. Approval of an ordinance and second reading requested by Councilmember Yaffe. Amended section uh, 5-23.01 providing for staggered terms for the members of the Planning and Zoning Board. An ordinance of the Town Council of the Town of Bay Harbor Islands, Florida, amending Chapter 5 of the Towns of Adopted Code of Ordinances entitled Buildings and Construction by amending Section 523.01 to provide for a staggered planning and zoning board, provided for severability, providing for qualification, and provided for an effective date. Okay. I'll move there's it. So actually, second. there's an error. Yeah, there's a huge there's error. There's an error. The description page is actually incorrect as compared to right. if right. you go to Exhibit A, B. Exhibit A, B says for a one year term and then a two year term, but the description says three and, uh, sorry. Description. I need to get my glasses. Yeah, um, exhibit four is years and so sure, and uh, three years. But it's really the one and two years rather than what the description says. So the description needs to be updated to match the actual ordinance. Yeah, yeah that was a, that was a, uh, what the board, no, the council had asked at the last meeting. It was changed in the ordinance, um, but it wasn't changed in the description. It was just a copy paste. Right. Thing. Okay. So the thank you, Elizabeth, for yeah. pointing that out. I mean, the, the point of this was that you know our last organizational meeting. In, in April, was it, or May? I don't remember when it was. So we reappointed, or reappointed the seven members of the Planning and Zoning Board, and you know, it's possible in some years you could have an entirely new P&Z board, and we've been talking about modifying some of the ordinances, and there would be a total lack of continuity if all seven members um, disappeared at one time, and you know, when you had a totally new board. So we're just gonna stagger the terms starting in 2020, because since they were just, Members were reappointed in 2018. At the end of their terms in 2020, we'll start the staggering process. I like the idea of staggering it with the, the one and two. I, that's 
Right. That's right. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. So exhibit um, B is is right. Okay. Right. Well, public A. Public okay. Public comment. Francis Newhart. Francis New Hut, 1060 King Concourse. Um, I disagree with this, and the reason why is I can't understand why you're doing this. There must be a reason for you doing this. These people have been on the uh, PNZ for quite some time. Nobody ever, ever brought up that, you know, it's time for you to get off. I mean, if that were the case, all of you would be gone too. Uh, we don't have term limits or elected mayors and stuff, and here you are, you know, giving them term limits. And these people... Excuse me, may I interrupt? You stop that clock, please. Mrs. Newhart, we're not giving them term limits. We in the council were elected 2-2-2-1, two, 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 and then this cycle starts over. Not all seven members of the town council are elected at the same time. It seems that of all seven members of the planning and zoning board, if their terms are up at the same time as they were this year, it's possible that if they don't apply, you know, for... Is this what they do in Miami Beach? I don't know what they do in Miami Beach. The point is well, that if they didn't the apply... The point is we should be similar to Can I finish my explanation and then you can Thank you. Well, start with your time again? Or if you don't want to hear about it, just finish no, your two I minutes. No, I just want to... Accept I don't We're not, there's no that. term limits on oh, planning and zoning board. They can reapply every yeah. two years. No time. Okay, fine. I just want to say that this Reasonable. planning and zoning board is fine. <laughs> you don't go to the meetings. I do. The people who are up there are excellent. I see no reason in the world that, that they have to be uh, questioned for their performance or anything. Um, unfortunately, the new people you're taking in, not, not the architect, the one who's actually uh, certified or whatever or talented, but these other people that you've been putting on have been a disappointment. They don't say too much. They don't know what really is going on. It's usually the uh, five of them talking, and it's, it's good. And why, why ruin something that is good? Um, if you're saying that they just have to reapply, fine. Uh, but I don't think we should touch this planning and zoning board the way it is. And I think you should find out what's going on in other municipalities because um, if, if you're bringing up these type of issues, you should find out what others are doing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay. Call a question? Call. <laughs> okay. Call vote. Uh, Councilmember Leonard. <laughs> Four. <laughs> Councilmember Reed. Four. Councilmember Sauver. Four. Councilmember Richard Coche. Four. Councilmember Yaffe. Four. Vice Mayor Fuller. Four. Mayor Bruder. Four. Unanimous. Okay. We're moving on to number 12. Item 12, consideration and approval of an ordinance on first reading requested by Councilmember Yaffe, amending chapter 23 relating to vehicle parking lifts. An ordinance of the Town Council of the Town of Bay Harbor Islands, Florida, amending chapter 23 of the Town's Adopted Code of Ordinances entitled Zoning and Planning, but adding section 2324H entitled Vehicle Parking Lifts, providing for severability, providing for codification, and providing an effective date. I'll move it. Second. So I brought this up a couple of months ago and then we discussed it at last month's council meeting because I had concerns about the operation of parking lifts um, in our garages. And, um, you know, it's really a safety issue. You know, I don't know that, you know, how the folks who live in the buildings that have these parking lifts are, are, are trained. I know a number of buildings, not just in Bay Harbor, but in other areas where they have full-time uh, valet services or, you know, employees of the association who are responsible for um, operating the lifts and retrieving cars for people. I do know that Michael Miller does not, from his memo, isn't necessarily in favor of this particular draft, and I thought that there was a broader discussion last month um, where some members said perhaps that, you know, unit owners or residents of the building should be able to operate the lifts but not guests and so forth. So. I'm not sure where we left that off because I thought that you were going to bring it back in a, in a modified version, Michael. But um, and, and I understand the financial impact on, on the buildings, which is really the question, particularly in smaller buildings. I don't think they can probably afford to have um, you know, a full-time employee 24 hours a day operating parking lifts. So I, you know, I think that there's room for compromise here. I mean, I am concerned about the safety and, you know, God forbid somebody has their kids and, you know, you're bringing the car from up top 
you got to move the bottom car to bring the lift down and take out the top car. I, I just think it's, uh, you know, it's a problem. I mean, there was opposition, I think, to parking lifts in, in general when, when we first discussed this and amended the zoning code to uh, permit them. Um, I don't think they're a great idea. I can tell you that I went to the demonstration that was offered to us at 9901, and uh, I've also been inside of uh, 9400 West Bay Harbor, and I don't think we should have them either, <coughs> just because I see what happens. First of all, the ones at 9901 were so loud. You know, like they had they had some safety mechanisms, so I was fairly convinced that if they offered the little certification course, that it's possible that they could be operated, you know, bless, bless you. you. Sorry. Um, but uh, the sound was audible 20 feet into the next lot, and, and that's with a pretty substantial covering. And then I went over to Bay Breeze, which is what I understand mostly, um, you know, people come by Uber and other transportation don't bring cars. There were no cars in there, but the first floor was completely open, you know, like a huge breezy area. So I would imagine when they start operating that they would be a real nuisance to the ones before that. So maybe that's the question. Um, but I think the way that they're going to get used is really just to be lifted and it becomes one space and it seems to be a way to circumvent the parking requirement. How many, how many buildings actually have right. lifts? Back page. Hey, just no, while you're I mean, looking actually, that up, I mean, just... Stephanie, if I may, I, I just wanted to point out because it was mentioned last time, if a building's already been approved, right, this wouldn't apply to them. I mean, they're grandfathered in, so we're talking about future projects. Right. I, I got to say, my number one concern is something that do, does get addressed in this, which is when you have people who have rentals or anything along those lines or visitors coming in using the lifts. I mean, that's the number one thing. I agree with you. I don't like lifts. I don't want the noise. I don't want the problems with them. But the number one safety issue is going to be right. anybody who comes in who rents it out for six months a year or whatever else is not familiar with the lift and you're going to end up with people getting hurt. Well, or how can we enforce that right. also? Because I think in condo law, doesn't it say like you cannot restrict amenities to the renters? There are issues such as that. I mean, you know, you, t you take the rights of the unit owner right. if, you're, if you're a tenant, unless the unit owner has reserved those rights for himself in the lease. But um, I'm not sure how you would, you know, enforce that with respect to short terms or, or rentals. Uh, you know, I, I, I've only visited really one building with the parking lifts and I think, I don't know, on 99, I, I, I don't know if it was 99 or one, it could be one of those buildings. Um, but, you know, I, I, I was told that visitors can't use the lifts and the, the folks that do have lifts do have to get some type of certification to use the lifts. Um, I don't think they're used that often in these buildings. For some reason, I, you know, they're just. But the problem is, you do get short-term rentals when you have someone that's sitting yeah, like that. Yeah, but no, they, they, there's, you know, they, they accommodate their parking even if they have to park them just in, just you know, stack them. Right, but that's it. That's an HOA yeah. that's doing it the right way, and then you have a lot. No, of but I, believe me, uh, I mean, I, I think these, you know, the folks that, you know, the the, the properties that do ha use parking lifts use them. Um, very, very cautiously. At, at least it appeared to me that way. I mean, I don't go around witnessing exactly what they're doing, but I know in this particular building, they said, you know, we, I had asked a couple of questions, you know, what if your renters come in and blah, 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 blah. And they said, no, they're very, you know, they're, they're, they're not used very often. Most of the lifts are used for folks that live somewhere other than here as a primary residence, and they leave, you know, they leave car or cars here you know, on the lifts and so um, at least one building where a lot of the, you know, I mean, I'm not saying that all the residents live there full time, but, um, and, and, you know, in that particular building, they do have valet service, but, um, uh, you know, it's hard, you really can't predict, you know, whether the building is going to be, you know, fully occupied or not. And uh, I just think it's, we instituted a lift system so that more units could be built basically on, yeah. You know, and that's really what it comes down to, and, and that's just something that maybe... And we did that, right. We did that a long time ago. Right, right. And I think in the future, maybe we need to, to revisit that. But in the interim, you know, this is just a question of whether we should somehow regulate the use of lifts um, pending any further discussion about perhaps not permitting them in the future. I support this, and I would love to see that item on the next month's agenda. I think I think the training is important. Um, I, I have a few issues. One is I, I did not see anything that grandfathers in the current buildings. So, for example, let's say for example you had a building that had uh, that has a lift system, and let's say 
it breaks and they have to put in a new system, you know, new technology or whatever, are they now, you know, now they can't put in a new system because it's completely new? Do they lose those parking spaces, which is, you know, which could potentially be property that could well, be... this isn't prohibiting lifts, this is just yeah. regulating lifts, so that's no, probably an existing building. It's but, not, um, No, this doesn't prohibit lifts, this is just regulating them. Well, it... <laughs> no, but it, you're... It doesn't actually... Well, hold on. Right. Well, your parking lifts may I be think permitted. that, Marlene, you and I talked yeah, about this today. It doesn't any, really any say... Any building that has a lift system in place would would not be subject to this, even if their lift system broke. Would it? I'm, I'm not playing attorney, but I've heard the attorney say many times that ordinances do not apply retroactively. No, but if it was a new <laughs> system, that's what I'm, I'm saying, if it's a new system. No, no, no. You know, I'm, I'm building that as a lift system and it yeah. breaks and they have to replace it, well, you're going to tell them that they can't... That's what I'm asking. I just no, want to make sure. Yeah, we approve a building right, with right. a certain number of parking I just want to make sure. Right. Yeah. Right. They have to maintain yeah. that number yeah. of parking right. spaces. Right. Let's park. call yeah. uh, yeah. Jerome. But won't the, the use of it pertain to the existing buildings if we're going to prohibit renters? So that part would, uh, you know, well, I don't know wouldn't that apply to all of them? That's, let's, that's a new use. In other words, right. a, a renter coming to use it is a different scenario. Right. Because they haven't used it before. Jerome. Good evening. Jerome Gafkovich, 1251 97th Street. I uh, just want to say that I'm uh, actually a big proponent of the list. I think the, the idea of the list is... Uh, what it does is eventually reduce the number, the amount of parking in the building, um, or f physically the volume of the of the building that's associated to parking. Um, and I, I think I mean, I've seen the lifts work. I think they're fairly simple. One of the comments was uh, Kelly made was about the uh, the noise in the I guess the the code right now we says that the garages have to be fully enclosed. I don't know if the ones that you visited. No, go by Bay Breeze. It's wide open. Right, <clears throat> but the code now says the garage has to be fully enclosed, so that the noise probably would uh, would be alleviated by um, by the fact that it, the the code does say that uh, the garage has to so, be enclosed. So you're in favor I'm of. In f I'm I'm against this ordinance. Okay. Um, I'm in favor of, of using lifts. Uh, I think it if, if you look at the the result of a building that doesn't have lifts, you're going to end up with at least two floors that's trying to maximize the number of units and maximize the size, two floors of parking or, or possibly more. And it's just too much of the building, um, <clears throat> in my opinion. I think as, as uh, we move forward, you're seeing, you know, especially with uh, car sharing, seeing maybe some people using less cars. There's, you know, you're just, you guys are talking about the, car, the, the buildings that you visited with lifts, a lot of cars, they're not being used. A lot of cars are not, there are not two cars per, per unit. Their code says we have to have two cars per unit. This two at spots. least two gives spots. you two huh? parking spots. Two spots. Mm -hmm. what Not two cars. <laughs> two, <laughs> two parking spots. spots. You're right. <laughs> two parking spots. And I think counting that, uh, counting lists, um, really helps. Uh, again, in order to reduce the volume the, uh, of the building to, to what is a more attractive part of the building, the units, as opposed to the, the garage. Do you think anybody should be able to use them, or should there be any, should there be any restrictions on the operation? I, I don't, I think the problem with the with valet is that the smaller buildings are not going to be able to do it. So what's going to happen is that they're going to end up with more garage building, more structure that's dedicated to garage. Jerry, let me ask you one thing, because I mean, you're, you're selling me on this. Uh, <laughs> I was going to vote yes, now I'm, I'm leaning your way. Um, let me ask you, because one of my main concerns is I believe it's better for the town that individual units are larger. The individual individual condo units right. get larger and larger. Would If we were to pass this, does that in any way encourage units to get smaller so that they can fit more cars down below? Because I know we have the height requirement, or does that have no effect? Yeah, ultimately, you're, you're the volume of the building is, is going to be the same. Right, so that's how what I'm worried more. about the units. In other words, if so obviously we're not going higher in buildings. If, the, if we have a height and you have a certain number of units you want to put into the individual building, obviously now if you have to take an extra floor for parking, my worry as you're saying this, it wasn't my thought beforehand, is now they're going to have to shrink the size of the units in order to fit the parking and the unit. If you're going to try to fit the same number of units, yeah, you'd have to, the units would end up getting smaller. Okay. If you, if, if you, on well, the other hand, if you look at it, it so right. 12 units, right. maybe you'll have 8 units. Correct, and right. So it, it, I can't say for sure, but if you're, if you're trying to maximize the, the number of units, 
then I'm, the units will get smaller yeah, because not, you're getting more. Developers end up I'm saying, trying to, so I'm right. worried about units getting so, smaller. Yeah, but I, I, I kind of, I kind of agree with uh, Jerome. I've seen, I've seen um, lifts used in other parts of the country, and it's, and it's worked. Well, have you seen them used in other parts of, of, of Miami? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, we, we've, I mean, we've specified said, lists on projects going back now um, at least 10, 12 years we've been, we've been using them. Um, and you've seen them in, in private homes, too, where they've used lifts. We, I, yeah, I yeah, have. Yeah, I, I have, have to. We have them. No, I know, yeah. but I'm saying yeah. I've seen and I, I private definitely, homes use, use lifts. Um, I definitely wouldn't uh, preclude their use in a townhouse because the town, I think most of the townhouses are in a garage. The only one who's going to use it is that unit owner or, or tenant. Um, the same thing with, you know, the only thing I, I think I, I like in here in terms of this, uh, this ordinance is that um, th what you should do is restrict those two spaces, the tandem, and they're basically a tandem space, whether they're vertically or horizontal, it's a tandem space. Someone's got to move for the one to get out, is restricted to, to a unit. Um, right. So they only. Can, let, let me. Let me. Point, and, and don't you believe that the size of the unit depends on what the market? I mean, like right now, most of the market is looking for bigger units. I mean, bigger units or smaller unit also depends on the market. Yeah, I mean, it's, you, I it mean, depends, it, on, the, it it depends on the market. Well, we have minimum big, sizes, so they can't circumvent our minimum right. sizes. No, but the problem okay. is, we want, but we want larger than we want. We, we don't can want raise the minimum, minimum size. Right. No, but it's we want <laughs> larger than that. I mean, you can't create what we want. We want we want the market to show larger units. Let me just ask this, because I mean, I don't know how this is going to go. I mean, my, you you flipped my you flipped me you, you sold me. Um, so my question goes back because I think the intent here that Bob had on this is the right idea as far as safety and everything else. So my question goes back is whether we're voting on it or Bob, if you want to go back and refine it to specifically more for safety, what you were, I think what you were aiming towards. Well, I understand the problem if you're going to permit lift, lifts and you have an eight unit building, that unit is probably not going to be able to afford to have a full-time valet or concierge to operate the lifts. I mean, it's just probably not going to work. I mean, I, I certainly don't think that visitors or, or renters who are you know, not quote unquote full-time occupants, I don't think you know, if, you, if you're showing up on an Airbnb or short-term rental or something, or you're there for a week, you, you know, be able to start using the lift, because God only knows what's going to happen if you haven't been trained. So if you want to let unit owners use it, um, I, I, I just wouldn't want to see visitors or renters use it. Right. Let's put it that way. If, require yeah. training. Uh, just require training and call right. it. I mean, I, I actually had the same thing that Jerry was going to mention about the townhomes. I think it's kind of odd that we would exempt the single family homes on, uh, you know, and then say, well, the townhomes, you, you can't do it un unless if you follow these, these standards, you know. I, I just think the training is, is what's the most important. If we require the training and just call it a day, then, you know, we did our job. Well, that's what I'm saying. So you know, well, this it, ordinance doesn't to... require training, does it? Right. right. So do you, want to, do you want to pull it and refine it a little bit yeah. more? Yeah, I'll pull it and refine it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Perfect. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Number... Uh, Stephanie, yeah. um, somebody's worried. This is new how to choose. Sorry. Oh. Yeah, but we, we, we pulled, pulled, we pulled we it anyway. So it's not, it's not going to be voted on. Number 13. Consideration and approval of a proposed ordinance on first reading, amending the town code with, to re, with regard to zoning and planning regulations to address the minimum open space requirements and second story area requirements of a um, single family uh, dwelling. An ordinance of the town council of the town of Bay Harbor Islands, Florida, I'm in the town's code of ordinances related to zoning and planning regulations to address minimum open space requirements, second story buildings, Area requirements in the RD single family district amending chapter 23.1 of the uh, zoning and planning code entitled definitions amending chapter 23.11 of the zoning and planning code entitled land development regulations providing for requirements and standards providing for severability providing for codification and providing effective date. Move it. Second. Okay. Discussion? Okay, Jerome. I just want to say one of the last minute changes that Michael did was that it doesn't just talk about the second story. Um, it talks about it being able to um, reduce by 80% the it second or the first story. But you can flip. Right. right. Flip yeah. All right, Jerome, you're up. 
from Gaffovich, 1251 97th Street. Um, and I spoke to Michael about it. I think I, I also uh, expressed uh, um, to Marlene uh, when I saw the ordinance. I think it's important that uh, if you, in order to um, really enforce this, that we have a, and, and we didn't really talk about it on planning and zoning, I guess we really uh, missed it, um, but we have a limit on the size of a one store, of, of a story. Uh, because a lot of this is predicated on the idea is the volume of this of the house um, <clears throat> and we're saying that lot coverage I'm sorry open space requirements and um, and this 80% is based on uh, the, the the number of stories uh, so if if a single someone built a single story home that's 24 feet high to the maximum height they can achieve uh, a larger volume than a two-story with um, than a two-story can, um, even though it's the same mass of building, or in this case it would be more mass of building because it, it would be 35 uh, percent, it would be 40 percent instead of 30. So I think we have to put a limit in terms of number of feet on the uh, on what a story means. Um, and there are uh, examples in the city of Miami Beach. Uh, does what a, uh, establishes what a, a, sing, a single story is. So I think that's just something that needs to be added. What do you recommend? And where? Uh, For I a think, single story. I think it should be 16 feet. Somewhere between 15, 14 to 16 feet. Um, I think you can achieve, um, well, probably 15 to 16 feet. I think you can achieve not high ceilings um, within that uh, and still uh, and still make it work, and it's not it's not as imposing as a you know. How does that affect a lot, a loft? I'm sorry. Like, could you have like you walk into an entry and it's double the size, and then? Well, you, you can have that, okay. but then you 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 have to be you're restricted by the by it. It's being going to be interpreted as a two story. So it's not it's not saying that you can't do these things. Right. But if you're going to have that kind of volume of a structure, then then you have to be um, restricted by the two story. Requirements. Mm -hmm. um, uh, did you see the you know, the house next door to? I think it's next door to Levine. Um, I'm not sure which of that. It's on 96. It's on, it's on your street. 97. Okay. It's on 97. Um, and there are two. The like list. there, you know, the Mizrahis built a house, which is really in scale and all. And the next one that's door, under construction now. And next door, yeah. There's a, right next door. There's the a that. one. Yeah. Okay. Forget it. I'm not going to talk about the front. Okay, in the back, um, you know they have. Like, I, I'm not. Sure. What's the set? The back set. Fifteen back, feet. Like, Fifteen feet. So I, I guess they ha what they did was like they have a, like a cutout. You know that property is just <laughs> just like a huge block there, and they cut out a couple of things. I think they cut out place for a pool or a backyard or whatever, and That's then. Like an L shape. And then, you know, what they did was, I guess they extended the second floor, and it appears as though it's almost going in to the neighbor's, you know, backyard. That, I mean, that's how close, like 15 feet just seems to disappear with the, just the sheer volume of that home. And what they did, aside from like this balcony that reaches out, I'm sure, probably to the, to the maximum possible limit or more, then they built like this spiral staircase from the from from like the patio up to the second floor deck, which certainly goes beyond that. Like that you know that deck. And you need code. Yeah, it sounds like code needs to go out and take a look at that. No, this meets code. It meets the code. Any building that comes. <coughs> any co any building that comes before planning and zoning meets that code. No, no, but I'm not saying I'm not saying we approved it outside of code. I'm questioning whether they built something different than what they actually got approved. If mm. what you're saying, is that you remember that? that? Like a building department. Yeah. Right. Because I mean, Steve Hurwitz was talking about that too. That sometimes he walks by a, a build a house and he or a building and he goes, "That's not what we approved. They've made this change afterwards." A lot of times that's like a window mullion or landscaping. That's generally, or yeah, and that's much recently, recently a was a more on top I of a building. That's right. all but they may be right. thinking it's the back of the house. No one's going to notice. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. You, sh you, you should know. Remember. You should know that. Our spiral staircase being back there. I, I don't remember the when we reviewed it in planning and yeah. zoning. That's I a, it's a while ago. Yeah. I don't. Then you need to have that person call code. Oh, no, no. Let me let me tell you. We go out during the construction of the building three times, with. Mike Miller and planning to make sure they are 
following the setbacks and they're living up to the, the building of the building. In my opinion, by the way, 15 feet is too small for a rear yard. Um, it's something I brought up during our conversations. We're not going to digress. Let's just talk scenario. about what we're talking about because okay. we're going to get off in tangents. Okay, so um, thank you so much, Francis Newhart. Um, the thing that surprised me in this was it was discussed at planning and zoning and I think you should be aware of it now that artificial turfs shall not be counted as a required open space. That makes a big difference, including in our parks, because those cannot be used anymore because they're not pervious. If I'm not this is single family. You didn't really. This is for single family. These are for right. single family. This is for family the single family home. Oh, OK. And it increases the amount of, of green space they have to put in the front because we're not counting the pervious pavers towards the green space. That was okay. the goal. OK, so we're, this only applies the artificial turf to, they can't use it in the homes only. Is that is that correct? For multifamily. OK, but you can use it in the multifamily. Could not. Open spaces. OK, like so you ta you're talking about more than just single family homes. Um, the reason I'm bringing this up is because there's nothing in this code that's not already there for the single family homes. And like uh, Councilman Salver had mentioned, these houses uh, across the street from me is just ridiculous. Just ridiculous. That's on 99th and- You mean they'd like the two lot? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, lot? no, it's not two lots. It's one lot and it's a corner. And these corners are becoming huge and they don't have setbacks. And, and, and also they have now, um, like I said, the water is not retained. I mean, they, they make it as high, the, the walls, we're putting walls now with water coming down. I mean, these codes that you are, are not being applied out on the field. And we've got close to a couple of houses, including the one that um, Mr. Uh, Councilman Salver had mentioned, that nobody's looking at. I'm telling you now, People have come over and said, how did that house even, people are amazed at the size of it and there's no green space. There's no open space. The walls are high. The water is dripping down into the street. Right. So I don't, I don't know what this, these codes are about if you're not gonna follow them. Thank you. That house well, we don't know yet. We don't know yet. We don't know. Know. The it's house isn't done. But have you gone out to measure the height of that wall? I mean, I've had that wall was removed. The one that we're yeah, talking about, it's, it's yeah, gone. Down. I haven't been here. But okay. Right. Yeah, it's been it's been addressed. Okay. And they were going at a legal. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's call. Call the question. Call the question. Okay. Um, Councilman Riaffi. Four. Councilman Richard Goche. Four. Councilman Sauber. Four. Councilman Reed. Four. Councilman Reed Leonard. Four. Vice Mayor Fuller. Against. Right, Mayor so Bruder. Okay. Mayor Bruder. Okay. It passes. So, okay, so this is, uh, I'm, pr I'm hoping and presuming and um, praying that this is just phase one. They're not done. They're, they're going to keep bringing you stuff. Okay. And this is oh, the this second ordinance, one. yes. Right. Okay, so phase two, keep, okay. keep them coming, <laughs> keep them coming. <laughs> Stephanie, before you proceed, yes. um, I represent the associations that are selling condominium units on items 14 and 15, so I okay. need to meet. Okay. Okay. What are you going to do now? Move on. Thank you. Okay, item 14, consideration and approval of a private transfer of development rights TDR transaction for one dwelling unit from Villas at Bay Harbor Condo Association, 1166 98th Street, to Atlantis 103, LLC 10281 West Bay Harbor Drive. I'll move it. I'll second. Okay. Call a question. There's no discussion. All those uh, in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, number 15. 15, consideration approval of a private uh, transfer of development right, TDO transaction for four dwelling units from 
Northern Star Condo Association 97 dash, uh, 9725 9745 Bay Harbor Terrace to Atlantis 103 LLC 10281 West Bay Harbor Drive. I'll move it. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Can somebody call? Respond. Bob back in. Okay. Chief. <laughs> Number 16. Chief. Get him back in. Thanks. That's my 16. There it is. Consideration of approval contract awarded to? Arrow Asphalt. <laughs> Go ahead, you get it. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to wait until Bob got back, but okay. No, I have a bet. Let's go. go. Okay, in the amount of 225000 for resurfacing roadways in Zone 2. Uh, we have a bid. You have the documents on how we arrived at the bids and uh, what Zone 2 is. It's actually all the interior streets on the West Island on the northern part of the island from 96th Street up to 103rd Street. Second. Okay, Paul vote. <laughs> you ready already? <laughs> Are we going to wait for him to walk in? Yeah. Ask him first. <laughs> 16. <Thanks> for <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for going so fast. <laughs> yeah, moved and seconded. Yeah, I'm doing the Paul vote. Next month's okay. meeting. <laughs> right, we're doing the, the, right, paving, the paving contract. Um, oh, actually, Kasman Leonard. <laughs> Four. <laughs> Casper Reed. Four. Yeah. Uh, Casper Saver. Four. Uh, Casper Vichikoshi. Four. Casper Yaffe. Four. Vice Mayor Fuller. Four. Mayor Bruder. Four. Big ass Pass. first. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Number Item 17. Consideration approval of 95th Street Park project budget in the amount of 181000 Contract award to West Construction for construction of the 95th Street Park. Um, the uh, West Construction has came in very well received, certainly by all the people who have, have used them, all the references checked out. They'll be installing the shade structures as well as installing the concrete and the fencing around the property. Move it. Second. Okay, call vote. Go. <laughs> um, Councilor Mayapi? Four. Councilor Chicoche? Four. Councilor Sauber? Four. Council Member Reed? Four. Council Member Leonard? Four. Vice Mayor Fuller? Four. Mayor Bruder? Four. Unanimous. Item 18, approval of a contract award to Brute Proof LLC in the amount of $29,750 to purchase a Hyper-V terminal server for the administrative computer network. Closes the proposal. Um, I was talking to Roberto. I know uh, he's in the back there. It's, from him, it's the last ma one of our last major projects for IT, and it's really just we pack up all our IT information. Uh, this is to have another server. If one went down, there would be a, a lag in building a new server. They don't, they're not like something you pull off the, the rack. Move it. They'd have to be done. Second. Second. Okay. I'm sorry. Can I just go back for a minute to number 17? I just have a question. Yes. Ron. Yeah. Um, I see that the that this approval that we just did requires an appropriation from general fund reserves, but isn't this a project that we could use park impact fees from? Yes. Yeah, I, yeah, sure. I mean, it just seems to make more sense than going from it the goes, It goes into general fund reserves. It's, it's, it's coming out, out of the same. It from separately from the regular reserves. I, mean, I asked about that earlier, okay. and Marlene told me it all comes out of general fund, so we can call it impact okay. fees, all but right. it comes out of general all right. fund. All right, okay. thank you. All right, no, go I'm, ahead. I'm here with you. No problem. <laughs> move for second on 18. Okay. Roll vote. Vote on 18. Um, Council Member Yaffe? Four. Council Member Chicoche? Four. Council Member Sauber? Four. Council Member Reed? Four. Council Member Leonard? Four. Vice Mayor Fuller? Four. Mayor Bruder? Four. It's unanimous. Okay, number 19. Discussion requested by Council Member Yaffe regarding the meeting date for the Charter and Ordinance Review Committee. The next date of the committee is set by resolution to review the charter every 10 years, with 10, uh, 2022 being the committee becoming active 12 months. So I, right. I'm sorry, I, I asked for this to be on the agenda um, at the end of the last meeting, last council meeting, um, because I guess I had misunderstood some information that Marlene had given me in the past, and I thought that the Charter and Ordinance Review Committee I thought so too. was coming up <laughs> in 2019 rather than 2022. You know, we did um, decide at the time of the last um, go around that this would be revisited every 10 years. Right. And uh, I was looking back at the old file that I had from the Charter and Ordinance Review Committee. And it appears to me, I think, that the, those committees came into existence probably in the early 2000s. 2005. 2000. 
I think it was earlier than that because I saw I went back and I looked at minutes where we were appointing council was appointing members to committees in 2002, 2003. So, anyways, mm -hmm. the point is it took many years for the council to, um, or the, rather the committee, to work its way through a wholesale rewrite of the of the charter and to go through some of the ordinances. And it wasn't until 2012 that the new charter was approved by the voters. Um, it seems like it's a lot longer than that, but the number of members of the community have had questions about or had suggestions about possible um, charter amendments and I was thinking that we can shorten that period from 10 years to maybe seven years or something so that some of the issues that you know members of the community have discussed recently or, or have brought up can be considered by a committee. Um, if we do this, you know, the state of Florida just went through its constitutional revision committee and, you know, they have very strict guidelines and it's a very limited period of time in which they have to work and they have, you know, certain meetings around the state and so forth. My point is, is that assuming that this committee did come into existence in 2005 and, there, and the charter amendments went to the voters in 2012, that's a long period of time to get from, you know, committee meetings to the voters and if, when this comes up again, I would like to see it structured differently so that, you know, there's a limited period of time in which the committee has to work mm -hmm. and then make recommendations to the town council because the town council will ultimately decide what amendments, if any, go before the voters. Uh, um, just, uh, if I can interrupt for one split second. You, well, you remember that the task or the major task of the committee was to do a complete right. rewrite yes. of the of the charter. Right, but it didn't start out that way, because I think I was one of the initial proponents of having the committee, and there were old ordinances in the books, such as, you know, you to clean up. The no, right, but such as municipal courts and things like that, which don't apply particularly after the adoption of home rule. So, um, but as we got into it, we realized that there were so many more changes that we did RFPs, and we ended up hiring Weiss Sirota to you know assist us with the rewrite but even that process seemed like it took years mm -hmm. for whatever reason and you know i i just want to see if this comes up again or when this comes up again whether it's next year or at some other point that we structure it differently and that there's a fixed time period for the committee to do its work and make recommendations because we did discuss some of the same issues over and over and over again, mm -hmm. <laughs> particularly as the composition of the committee changed over time. Okay. Um, but in any event, I just brought this up because I wanted to know if any of the other members of the council share my thought that maybe we should take a look at the charter sooner than 2022. I, I agree that we need to have some kind of set timeline for the charter and uh, ordinance committee to actually meet and come to its conclusions. That's definitely, now as far as whether they need to meet sooner, it doesn't hurt. I mean, there's no reason not to. At this point, it's been a while. Ten years is, might be a little bit too long for it. So if we want to do it after seven or eight, that's fine. Um, when we... Uh, I, I'm sorry for giving my back. I don't know what my posture is all about. Um, the, the committee, when it was set up originally, had, I think, it was three council members right. and two laymen. Um, I think it was a seven-member committee, actually, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Seven members? Was it three? It was always seven. It was always seven. Was yes. always seven. Yes. So was it three? Marlena? We had up to three it? or four council members and then other members mm -hmm. of the community. It varied from time to time. It was right. three or four. Well, I, I, I think at one point we had three, then we had four. Right. Yeah, it changed. Yeah, so it changed, it changed over, over time. time. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, one of the things that, you, you know, you mentioned the Constitutional Revision Commission or committee, um, you know, and that, you know, that body has like 33 right. members yeah. or something like that. And <laughs> so they're different. You know, and, their, and their selection, and Jordan is yeah. giggling, right. and I agree with him <laughs> that it was very, very, you know, it was very political. Oh, extreme, of course, it's extremely that, simple, you know? right. But, um, I mean, do we want to consider, um, you know, how the committee will be uh, populated? Um, other than the way it was before, do you want to keep it the way it was Well, before? right now, none of our committees have council members who are sitting members of the committee. Um, I mean, I don't have a problem if it's just members of the, of the, Actually, of the community. Actually, the current resolution is, says that it should be yeah. seven members, all of which shall be residents or elector of the town. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't say anything about um, 
Yeah, it does. Council. You know, well, council. Let's, let's no, no, but I'm saying, but, but all of our, the existing committees now don't, right. I, don't have council right. members right. on them. Mm -hmm. So I don't, Let, Let's know. hit the first question. Right. Are we doing this? No, right, right. I mean, what's the consensus of the council? Do you want to? I, I think seven years is sufficient, and I, I think a 12-month cap. Give them 12 well, months, you know, to, to come back and send something out. You think it takes a whole year? If I could put my two cents into this. Our yeah. 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 Our time. committees don't meet Jordan. so yeah. regularly, yeah. 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 Well, and members don't show up. I mean, I'd love to have six months, but I don't think it's realistic. I think 12 months is realistic. How long did the Constitutional Revision sure. Committee meet? It, it takes I think the whole process like two it, years. It takes it takes the, a year. The current the, the current the resolution says no. they shall have 12 months, okay. and the council can extend the, another 12 months if necessary. Okay. Well, the CRC is very different. Yeah. I actually, no, I, know, I mean, I worked on the last CRC 20 years ago, um, and it's very different. It was t it's 20 years, so obviously that's different. This took a long time because, the, as as Bob pointed out correctly, you know, they were asked to rewrite everything from scratch, and the entire code and charter, you know, I mean, and, and it had never been done before. So, and then of course, as Marlene mentioned, you know, people, you know, changed and whatnot, but I mean, I think, I think the town did an incredible job, all things considered. Ten years was something that, that I agreed with, and I don't see any reason why it needs to change to 10 years because there's already mechanisms. You know, when, when you look at, when you look at the, the, the fabric of, of how the government is set, there's a reason why the CRC is designed the way it is. There's a reason why this was designed the way it is. It's more than we just took numbers out of a hat. The CRC is different, and I, I don't mean to just go back to the, how the state works, but it's important to mention the CRC is one of the only, Florida is one of the only states in the country where their commission can put something directly on the ballot. That's not common. I don't believe there's any other state that actually does that actually. Ours has the ability to not do that, which would be, I mean, that would be very rare. Um, and I would not be in favor of that. It should go back to the council. I think that there's already a mechanism in place that if the council wants to put something on the ballot, they may do so like we have in the last meeting. If the residents or people for that matter want to put something on the ballot, there's a mechanism for that. In Florida, there's five different mechanisms for putting something on the ballot for the Florida Constitution. We have, I think, three. So I, I don't see how there's, you know, how we're disenfranchising residents. Um, you know, I fail to see where just because a few residents want term limits or want this or want that, it's the same individuals that, if, pardon me for saying, but one of those even individuals had a family member that actually sat on this committee. You know, I, I don't see the push for that. If there was a push, then they would have presented the signatures and, and done it. No, nothing's really changed. I think what we need to look at is more than just the hype of, of one or two issues, but look at the structure of do we need to actually really look at our method of government. Now wait a second, and if, if you're going to do that, it's more than just term limits. They need to actually really look at this. And 10 years is not off the walls when you're looking at it. Find me another municipality that's less than 10 years. I don't think you'll find one. So I don't, I don't think there's any reason to change it to 10 years. Yeah. Uh, I know the first. Yeah, um, I don't know if we necessarily need the committee you know, we have a PNZ to advise us, the Parks Committee, but then very often, you know, we get an idea like the 95th Street Amphitheater thing, you know, and we're free to uh, vote on that if it, if it overwhelms us. And uh, I think there are several issues, and I mean, I think it's very disingenuous to say just, you know, let them get their signatures because that question that was on the 2012 um, referendum changing, basically changing from 10 to 20 percent for the requirement. Uh, you know, it's very strange how everything else, I think there were two parts of that that didn't pass, right? Something about um, some benefit for the manager. Yeah, actually, the, we had 20 percent in the charter. Right. We were proposing 10 percent. Right, but people that voted failed. it against. It's, I understand, right. but you know, like there, I think there were seven questions. Yeah, the manager and, and five. On. If you look at the yeah. amounts, yeah. yeah. So two two failed and five passed, mm -hmm. yeah. and it was really kind of suspicious to me. Like you know, all five kind of went along, and then you know, there must have been some kind of a campaign to get that uh, to 
to Kelly, fail. Kelly, may I for a minute? I just don't, I just don't really understand that. To Marlene, you're yeah. saying that the, the prior charter had 20% in the... The current charter also has 20%. No, no, but there was a proposal pass. to reduce it to 10%. To 10%. But yes. it didn't pass. It didn't pass. Right. So it remained 20%. So Correct. There was no, but it, no, but it was 10%. No, no it was 2000, not. No. It was no, not. It was 20%. It was 20%. No. The proposal didn't make any sense why it didn't pass, was to reduce it to 10%. Right, right. So that we could be the same as the county. Right. And it did not, it failed for some reason. Well, I, I suspect then in 2012, when the signatures were presented for the yes. height referendum, weren't there 10% presented? Yes. I think it was. I, I think I think at that perhaps we were I'm operating just, under the current county, right? I don't know. No. I, I don't remember okay. specifically. Well, that was a legal opinion. At the okay, time so probably. one. That's okay. Okay. Sorry e to interrupt. Yeah, yeah. That's all right. Either either way, um, I think that you know there's only a handful of questions. We're I don't think we really need mm -hmm. even in ten years. I don't I don't see the need for a complete clean sweep of the whole charter. I think that's something that was done one, once after fifty years. You know, it w and, and it w I remember asking for the legislative version of it to see all the changes, and that's when it became apparent to me, you know, that it was so antiquated that it, why Sirota just presented a whole new document, and then it was tailored for Bay Harbor. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. But, you know, I think it's a shame that um, a couple of these questions that we could discuss, you know, term limits being one of them, maybe the size of the council, um, you know, when our elections are, like these f maybe five or six things that, that come up occasionally, and I'm sure you discuss it. That's one of the meetings that I really didn't go too much to for that committee. But, um, you know, we, we, could, we could put them on and let the voters decide mm -hmm. I, without this, you know. Um, so, and I think, you know, we approved a charter change at the request of developers last month, and it went down really smoothly. And whenever we talk about anything, you know, that, that might not be a personal desire of some people here on this council, um, you know, we go back to this uh, procedure, and, and I just think it's disingenuous. I think we, we don't need the committee at this point. We've cleaned up the charter. I think we should really engage, you know, the people who are asking, maybe do a, a survey of the community. Put it in the newsletter, you know, or use a survey monkey or some other device so to find out. That we should have a committee. I don't. I don't think that we need to go through a long, drawn-out process. Right. If there are two or three issues, you know, that are being discussed. It's just know. disingenuous to be the say the exact opposite and say I want this, I want this, I want this, and every year you bring it up, and every year it doesn't get it. How about let the people decide? I hear that all the time. And let the people what? decide. We, we said that about the last thing. Why can't we, we let them decide? The only distinction that I, that, that, that I, well, it's in my mind anyway, but yeah. um, was that, you know, the height limitation is, is, is one thing, you're over on, on, on the tracks, but you know, when you're talking about changing the entire system of government, or potentially changing the entire system of government, which we've had for 70 years plus now, um, I'd like to see more participation in, from, from the community, um, whether it's, you know, in committees or, or whatever, rather than having a, a limited number of people right. say, let's just put it on the ballot because two, three, four, five, and I'm not criticizing anybody. I'm not, I, I'm not taking a position on it, but I just think that there should be more involvement from the from the community and you know if you have a if you had a committee and really nobody came and nobody participated then I wouldn't be as persuaded that there's really a, a what do you think about a workshop instead of you know like s establishing a committee because if we did a committee so clearly we don't put council members on anymore so you know we wouldn't have any of the of those of us who were on before um, and that way you know we would be participating and instead of having the committee, then anybody who I might mean, want to serve on it would come. I just brought it up because people have been talking about yeah. charter change. It's an option, it for sure. An opportunity for us to discuss it, obviously, in public yeah. here amongst ourselves. Okay. We have public comments. Yeah, we have yeah. public comments. Uh, Mrs. Newhart? Um, before I talk about issues, um, Mr. Sherman, um, this is the original charter that was passed in 2012. And I was told that having um, the Charter and Ordinance Re Review Committee with the attorney from Bell Harbor, meaning the four sitting council members here, 
um, that were on this committee and wrote this was illegal. Is that correct? That they participated with a Bell Harbor attorney at an ordinance and re review committee which was supposedly made up of the citizens of the town, not the majority vote that's sitting up here and has been for Bell Harbor attorney. It was a firm. It wasn't illegal. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to clarify that. Um, the other thing I wanted to say was in here, uh, it is, uh, Kelly was correct, it does said, it was set at 10%, which is very difficult to get signatures, and I think it was wrong of this committee to make it so hard for us to do that, especially when it took just a snap for you to decide on the charter and ordinance to put on a ballot for November uh, building height limitations after we worked so hard to get 75 feet limitations and you just decided, gee, isn't that a good idea? I think in November we'll put that on. Meanwhile, for the past more than 10 years, we have been asking for um, an elected town mayor and term limits. Um, we have here other municipalities. Look at the size of Bow Harbor for November 6th for their election. Okay, you see how big this is? Instead, uh, we have, after the election, uh, we have people saying, and this was in the minutes, um, that it was, the election was confusing with the fly election flyers. Um, it's, it's just terrible what you're doing. These are the minutes. Um, this gentleman who ran in the election, uh, skipping you. out to meet the candidates, we, don't even, we didn't even Thank know you. who Victor was. It's not fair. It's not Thank fair. You. And we really should be putting uh, this on the November 6th uh, ballot. Thank you. So Thank, you. Thank you. Victor Maya, 1155 103rd Street. I congratulate this council because meeting after meeting after meeting, year after year after year that I have been here, I have heard the call from developers to increase the height on two properties in our town. Meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting, this injustice, this horrible thing that we have in our town charter, we need to change it. I've heard that over and over and over and over again. That's where we're at. No developer has come here before to ever request a change in the height ordinance in the five years that I've been coming to meetings. And we can look at all of those minutes. But a developer comes along and decides that they want to change the height on two properties, going back to original intent, we can go back to original intent. Why didn't you just eliminate the height restriction completely? If you want to go to original intent, why just limit it to two properties? And then we have a special council meeting to approve putting this on a ballot for change. And not only putting it on a ballot, but November. I have heard time and time again from you guys. Nobody in this town cares about November ballots. We can't put any local issues on November ballots. We have to have our elections and our questions all decided in April. But no, for this special, special, special charter change for a developer, we're going to have it in November. It's blatant hypocrisy. There's no way around it. You know, and I appreciate your efforts, uh, uh, Mr. Yaffe, in terms of looking at uh, uh, Ordinance Review Committee, um, and Charter Review Committee. Um, but uh, to me, it's, it's just all a waste of time. Thank you. Excuse me, I, I have something to say. Hypocrisy, Mr. Maya, hypocrisy is You're when... You're calling me out? Yes, I am, actually. Hypocrisy... Oh, no, 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 no. The last meeting, you didn't even comment. You didn't even comment at the last meeting. You say that now after it passed, but the previous meeting, when you were in the audience, and I was looking to hear what you and other neighbors of yours sure. had to we say. On the topic. Yeah, no, no, but you yeah, had on. no yeah. whatsoever in hearing about. anything that I had to say. You didn't speak to Ever. Gentlemen, okay. okay. And I think it's absolutely despicable that you allow him to do that. Thank you need you, to Mr. control Maya. your meeting. Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Mr. Maya. Good luck. All right.
All right. I'll call the question. Motion to close? Motion yeah, to close. close. Oh, wait, we didn't sign on this. Sorry, Bob. Yeah, I, Sorry. No, I followed right. the train. <laughs> I followed the train. Out no, it's the fine. I'm not sure there's anything to vote on. It was a discussion I'm issue. Fine. So I'm fine if there's a moving along with you. Right. So it depends on whether there's a consensus to go forward or not. I, I have a motion yes, to adjourn. Go forward. I right, second. My consensus. Go forward. No. Just as well. We, we need to know whether there's a consensus. I don't. However you want. I mean. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure what we're in, but I don't. Not sure we're going forward with. Are we changing to seven? Are we taking a Well, that was a good question. Whether we were going to bring it up again. Have a workshop. I don't want to no work. Work. I, I don't have a problem with the workshop. No, no consensus? No. No consensus. Okay. No. Okay, so we're not Those doing anything next month. Thank you. There you go. Okay.